go to avoid those or fly high over them, whatever the restrictions might happen to be. And here you're getting a chance to look at one of the tanks down inside Tristan's balloon. There's the fuel gauge right in the center, the knob, the knob at the top, the valve, that's going to feed his main valve. And the red one would be for a whisper valve or a fire two or a metering valve. Each manufacturer calls it something else. It's a, a separate, separate way to get fuel into the burner if you needed so. And I'm not sure what the other piece of equipment he has mounted in that tank is. Could be part of a, well, not sure. So we won't go there. We are now one minute away from our national anthem. Our national anthem this morning will be performed by the University of New Mexico Concert Choir. And again, we're coming up on 7 o'clock and the start, the official start of our activities here on day 9 of the 50th Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta powered by Exxon Mobil. Our balloon of the day, 96.3 News Radio KKOB being piloted by Ron Curry. And ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the stage for our national anthem now performed by the UNM Concert Choir. The UNM Concert Choir, our national anthem, and a salute to America by a number of our pilots with their candlestick burners lighting up our early morning sky. So as we mentioned, the balloon of the day, the KKOB balloon, Ron Curry, has decided to stay on the ground at the moment. We keep hearing reports of the winds at the north end of the field where they seem like they're trying to calm down. So the yellow flag, I believe, is still up as we... Yep, they're confirming on the radio that the winds are starting to trend down. So we uh, still believe we're going to be able to get flights off here in just a little bit. So just monitoring the uh, radio communications between the weather folks to our balloonmeister Henry Rosenbaum to our launch directors as well. We are hoping and still planning to attempt to get a launch off this morning. 
that we would attempt to do that before we would set other balloons up that may want a static, although as Glenn was explaining just a few minutes ago, the breezes are still such that it's not the best to be standing your balloon up. As we watch the KKOB balloon, you can see the side kind of caving in a little bit as the wind comes from that direction. So trying to do a static balloon and keeping your balloon standing and having the side of the balloon cave in with this wind that we have coming out of the north, not necessarily the best. If you're going to stand your balloon up at a situation like this, uh, best to kind of get it hot and get it up and go fly. Absolutely. Much better, much easier to launch and fly in winds than to tether or do a static display. As you're talking about the winds, Art, uh, one of our viewers in the Facebook page says, uh, Jennifer uh, Verhoog is asking, is there a term for the wind that travels along the river? Drainage wind comes down from the mountains and creates ground, let me hit the sea more so I can see the rest of it, creates uh, ground wind. Uh, so is there a term for wind that would travel along the course of a river? I've never heard one. I can't think of one either. Um, so Because it is kind of following along and following the river as the river drains to a lower lake location, I would think you could call those drainage winds as I well. I would suppose you could. Yeah. I know, um, I was, was it you I was talking with about flying at Billings, Montana one year? Um, if not, it was someone here at the park and I was describing how up in Billings, you, the, the river has this huge bluff all along it and so you would launch and, and the surface winds would carry you toward the river, toward that bluff and you're flying along in your balloon, and it looks like you're just going to crash into the side of this rock wall. Yeah. And just as you cleared the shoreline and get out into the river, you just, you're just you going straight ahead, and then you just suddenly turn and go, and the, the wind flowing down the river, the river actually grabs your balloon, and you turn and flow down the river with it, um, as opposed to going on and crashing into the bluff there. It was really quite a, a unique um, Phenomena of yeah. nature uh, and of the landscape, the way the wind well, flowed up there in it Billings. It has to go around it. It can't go through it. Exactly. And so, um, you know, that was a case where there was a definite uh, difference in wind flowing along a river, but I've never heard a term for that. So yeah. I guess the answer to the question would be no, or at least not one that Art and I are familiar with. Ruth Lind has found someone else to chat with on this last day. She's good at that. She is very good at that. So let's go down and check in again with Ruth Lind. That's the favorite part of my job is talking to these people. This morning, I am with Katie and Mike Heffron. They're from right here in Albuquerque. We were attracted by the sight of their really cool trailer and ground lights, which we'll talk about in a minute. But I want to talk to Katie because Katie is the crew chief and she has the most awesome job. Katie, tell me about some of the things that are your responsibility running this team. Good morning. Um, my favorite part about running the team is just working with so many new people, so many new crew that want to come out and help, and just guiding them to teach them how we set up the balloon. And the most important thing for me is just to make sure that the balloon is connected properly to the basket um, so we have a good safe flight. Um, and then, you know, chasing is so much fun with everybody running all over town trying to find find out where he's going to land and everything. So um, just making sure, you know, his landing zone is a safe zone to land in. Um, no fences, no power lines and that kind of thing. So, And what do you do? You get to a landing spot and you're probably the first contact with the landowner. How does that usually go? Usually it goes pretty well. Um, we, we get a lot of people out in their pajamas and their slippers, <laughs> which is always a lot of fun. Um, but people are excited when we want to land in their yard. You know, we wake a lot of people up in the morning banging on their doors. Um, but they're always very welcoming, you know, yes, please land in our yard. <laughs> and they come out and join us. So what's usually the first thing you say to them? We just say, hey, our balloon, we're here. Can we land in your yard? Is that okay with you? And come out and join us. Come and see the balloon. Wonderful. Now, Hef, you designed this wonderful light system. I, your trailer, and then we have lights all around your... How, how did that even occur to you? Where did that all come from? 
Well, when we started flying Dawn Patrol, we needed more light and uh, to give us uh, some light to be able to put the system together. And then it just uh, started to build from there. We decided to do a light show with our trailer and a light show in and around the balloon system also. I wouldn't be surprised if you get recruited by the drone guys pretty quick. I mean, this is really beautiful. So are these all LED lights and how are they powered? Yeah, they're all battery operated LED lights. Uh, the ones off the trailer, we wire right in with the trailer lights and it has a remote control where we can change it to, to dance with the music or just do solid different lighting. Very, very cool. Hef and Katie, we're so glad you're with us today. Enjoy whatever the day brings. We don't know. Static, light, <laughs> who knows? Anyway, back to Glenn and Art on the stage. Thank you, Ruth. And, uh, you know, we get a lot of great comments that are compliments of the work that Art and I do together. Uh, so I just wanted to share this. Ruth, I hope you're still listening because uh, Barbara Lay Delgado says, Great interviews and great job, Ruth. Love listening to you every morning. Hope all get to fly, and here's to Fiesta uh, 51. So, yeah, so your efforts certainly appreciated by our audience as well, Ruth, and I would echo that. Great job down there. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yes, Ruth always does a great job, always finds just the best people on the field to talk to and ask the right questions and just bring you things that you probably don't see out here on the field yourself. Well, and just as the evolution of Balloon Fiesta Live from just being field announcers, which is what Tom Rutherford and I used to do, talking over the PA, just as you brought Balloon Fiesta Live uh, into being, and we bring a new element with people being able to see the balloons and um, watch all of the activities going on, Ruth being on the field adds even a newer element, yes. another element, by bringing us the personal stories of all the people here, whether they're spectators or vendors or pilots, crew chiefs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and I agree, she does a great job of finding just the right people to talk about. They always have uh, an interesting perspective to share. And um, I've done that street reporter job back in my days, and it's not an easy job to do. And Ruth does it effortlessly. It makes it look very easy and uh, well done, but it is a difficult job, and, and she does it very well. It brings that element to Balloon Fiesta Live, I think, that I like to talk about. Come to Balloon Fiesta, experience it in person, but then go home and watch it again on Balloon Fiesta Live because and see what you missed. See what you missed, yeah. frankly, yeah. Because you know, I've told pilots for years when I meet you know new pilots and they say, "Oh, I've always wanted to go fly at Fiesta." My advice always is, the first year, don't go as a pilot. Go, go as a spectator. Good advice. Just go and watch and see how it all works and how it happens and how big it is and all the things the pilots have to deal with. Don't do that as a rookie pilot and come in here and, and you can be you can get flummoxed and just overwhelmed by yes. everything that's going on. Yes. Come the first year as a spectator. Just enjoy it. Soak it all in. Get the lay of the land. Then, if you still want to come and fly here, come and fly. You know, I also coordinate all of our official photographers here at Balloon Fiesta, have for the last four or five years. And every year we get a few new ones, and I try to explain to them how big a job this is, yeah. how big the field is, how the, the number of balloons in the sky, the number of people. And so I encourage them to go back and watch our previous Balloon Fiesta live shows to get an idea. Well, that's a great idea. And they still show up, and then after about two days, they go, Oh my God, I had no idea. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because I, I used to tell people when I first started coming out here myself, I said, you know, Fiesta is like sensory overload. If yes. you've never been here, you know, you can go to a, a, a small community balloon event with 20, 30, maybe even 50, uh, maybe even as much as 100 balloons at different parts around the country, but you can't imagine what it is to stand on the field on a good flight day and see balloons literally everywhere. You can't turn without you know, your entire focus being filled with balloons. It literally is almost a sensory overload. And, and that's why I really encourage people, you need to come the first time just as a spectator. Just let it, just let it all kind of sink in, take it all in, uh, because it is very overwhelming. Um, gosh, I know even even the first year that I was here as an announcer, I, I was, and especially the, those first few years because I was working solo, 
uh, Tommy would be down doing television. I'd be up on the uh, on the roof or the scaffold at the time, um, <laughs> doing this on my own. Whatever platform we found to put yeah, the, the announcer with, on. Yeah, uh, the only you know the only, uh, the only aid I had was Glenda Watson, our spotter, who would be up here to help me spot sponsor balloons. But other than that. Um, you know, it was a solo job, and it really was just overwhelming. It's so much easier uh, to work with a partner, as I did with Tom for 25 years, and now with you for six, seven years, I guess we're going on now. Yeah. Um, it, it's so much easier because you can bounce things off of each other. Each of us sees things and reacts to things the other one doesn't. Um, so it makes it much easier to work as a tag team, as it were. But the whole event is, uh, well, it, as we heard Sam Parks say, it is the largest event of its type in the world, and it's an awful lot to take in on your first visit here. I think there's a one little indicator that most people don't know about is just how big this is compared to other balloon rallies. One of the questions that we ask pilots that apply to come to Balloon Fiesta and fly here is, have you ever flown with more than 50 balloons in the air at the same time where you are? 50. Oh, yeah, yeah. We put. 550 or this year 650. 650 yeah so and we're asking have you flown with more than 50 balloons at the same time right because you know most balloon rallies are in that order of somewhere to probably 20, 20 to, 50. to 50 yeah, yeah that's the average yeah, yeah by and large some yeah. are bigger than that but so that is one of the, yeah that's the difference um so yeah i've flown with 50 or i've flown with 45 yeah it's a lot more otherwise well, and the other thing is have you ever flown at altitude because yes. we're at yes. 5,000 feet here and i learned that lesson my first year here as a pilot yeah, I was yeah. flying a 70 my 77 Thunder Colt Yellow Rose and um, I quickly learned that the balloon does not perform the same at altitude because of density altitude etc right. as it does the at thinner. sea level where I lived and where I learned to fly and there were a couple of times in my first uh, year or two flying here when I had some close calls and just went, oh, I see, um, <laughs> and there was quite a learning curve. And so that's another thing to take into consideration if you're a pilot wanting to come to Fiesta. Um, learn to fly and get some experience flying in different, um, different locales. If you just fly you know, in, in, at home all the time and home is at sea level, you're going to be shocked to bring your balloon to uh, Albuquerque and fly at 5,000 feet here in the high desert. It's a whole nother ball game. And we've been seeing some balloon envelope activity down on the field. Um, I noticed uh, one balloon actually stretched it out so that they can take the sponsor banner off the side of it. And others have stretched it out and have hooked it up all in anticipation of that we're going to get a green flag. And our assistant balloon meister, Peg Bilson, has just told the pilots that we are putting the green flag up. And uh, while they haven't actually changed it yet, they're about to. And so pilots will be able to fly here in the next couple of minutes, or at least get, to, get ready to fly here in the next couple of minutes. But we should be changing the flag from yellow to green, as she tells them. Um, that, that's what I think I just heard her say that we're going to be going green here shortly. Outstanding. And if I may say so, it's about time. <laughs> Not meaning this Not, morning. No, and yes. No, yeah. no different, no, def, no dissing this morning. Just for this balloon fiesta, by gosh, it's about time we see a green flag. We've seen far too much of that yellow flag all week long. So that is great news. That is great news. So we continue to see the balloon of the day, KKOB. Oh, look at that cutie. There you go. <laughs> Don't stick your Don't tongue, stick out, your tongue out. out. Get to work. Get that balloon standing up. There you go. <laughs> Here's an interesting tip that... Um, yeah, Ina Vanderkratz says, if you go to Fiesta as a photographer, here's, a, here's one for some of your official photographers and anyone else, bring enough memory cards, battery packs, and don't be selective taking photos the first, the first time because you never know what might make a great picture. Just shoot everything. I, I would agree with that. Yeah, I would. one of the early days when I was here, obviously we weren't shooting digital, it was film. Film, yeah. And it was really amazing how many rolls of film you would yes. go through and how really, frankly, expensive it was to then develop all those films 
and to be, have all those pictures. So the great deal with digital now, yeah, just bring a whole lot of cards, take a whole lot of pictures. It's easy to delete the ones that don't work. You can always delete the ones that don't work out, yeah. Yeah, I, I, a quick story I'll tell as we're waiting to see the green flag go up is that some years ago, I paid for my way on a trip to Europe to the, the 1983 World Championships uh, over in Nantes, France. Uh, a group of us, a couple of balloonists who were also in the travel business, put together a travel group out of Plano, Texas, and there were uh, several balloonists and a few that weren't, and we uh, organized a trip to go to uh, Nantes for the uh, World Championships, and then we also did some touring around Paris and Normandy and other parts of France. So I put together, a, I was a budding amateur photographer, and I put together a package where I, uh, I promised, uh, made a contract with all the other members of our little tour group, there were like 18 or 20, that I would produce a souvenir photo album for them. Because again, this go. was in the days well before, there goes the green flag, well before digital. And so um, I shot a ton of photos, some of them generic, like say for example, a sure. generic shot of the Eiffel Tower, but then I made a point of shooting candid photos of each person that was in our tour group got home, developed all that film, and then put them into albums, and, and I charged a fee for the album, and that's kind of how I paid my way over on the trip. Sure. Uh, but it, the funny part was going through the airport, I had gone to a thrift store and bought you know, a second or third hand old beat up suitcase, and I had it loaded with nothing but Kodak film. film. <laughs> you know, There must have been 100 rolls of 36 yeah. exposure film in there, yeah. and going through the airport in those days, you know, I'm not sure if, you, if they were damaged or not, but there was this, oh, no, don't x-ray my film, right, don't, because right, that'll hurt yeah. the film. So I would have them hand inspect, oh, you know, the open the suitcase, and then, and then they'd be confronted with this suitcase full of all these rolls of film, and you could see eyes roll, you know, amongst the, uh, prior to um, uh, the uh, all the security we have at airports these days, but still, you could see the people at the gates and at security, their eyes would kind of roll back in the back of their head when they saw this suitcase full of film. Uh, so that's my film story, but uh, that was fun. Still have those, uh, my albums anyway, that we produced from that. That was a great group. And, th and that was the years it turned out after we had already made the plans and, and put the group together and uh, booked all the tickets and everything. That was the year that the United States ended up boycotting going oh. to the World Balloon <laughs> Championships. Oh, no. So there were, uh, yeah, there were no Americans there, but still we had, a, we had an absolute great trip. One of my super great memories, one of my first trips overseas uh, to uh, to France for the 1983 Worlds. As you were telling us that story, we watched the green flag we go did. up. There, it, there is. it is. Yeah. And the uh, scissor lift, one of our cameras, right next to the Main Street stage. There he is waving at us. And we've also been watching uh, Tristan McLean. Uh, is, set up. So is that the old um, Balloonmeister's Tower? Remember, we heard George Hahn saying the other day that you know when he was Balloonmeister. They just had a scissor lift, and, and the pilots would all chant, higher, higher, yeah, yeah, higher, as yeah. he rose up. Yeah. That's uh, probably not the same one, but that's exactly what he had, is something like that. So we've been watching, and we see again here Tristan McLean and his Hot Minute crew getting everything rigged. They've connected the envelope to the burner, to the basket and the burner frame. So we saw him put the, uh, mount the camera, all-important camera for Tristan, and they just put the tie-off line on, double-checking to make sure the cables are connected correctly. The next step will be to start that inflator fan we see right behind them and start to blow cold air, because it is definitely colder today than it's been, cold air into the balloon and then that will start the cold inflation process. Looking out farther in the field, a number of our Rainbow Rider balloons and other balloons yeah, are, are starting inflated. to inflate as yep. well. So again, the green flag is up and the field is open for launches. They'll still need their launch director like they always do due to the fact that we have so many balloons here and it becomes literally the busiest airport in the world for about an hour and a half. That's right, you cannot launch without approval of a launch director. Uh, another comment in the Facebook group says, when I attended my first balloon fest, I brought 30 rolls of film and still ran out, but was able to buy more here on the field. Remember, uh, there was a time when Walgreens would have a booth here on the field and they would sell film because it was a highly sought after uh, commodity before the days of uh, digital cameras. And you could actually turn your film into their booth here yeah, at the could. field and they would take it away, process it, and then you could come back and pick up your prints that afternoon. I remember all the uh, 
folks walking around with the different with the boxes of all the different film sizes. Yeah. So that you could literally not have to even go to That's like right. Walgreens. They were yeah. like street vendors just wandering around. And even out among the field. Yeah, like a cigarette girl, you yeah, know, that yes, you see in the exactly, old movie. Exactly, yeah. you know, you know, cigarettes, candy, whatever. Yeah. And they but they were just selling all the different they had, you know, Kodachrome and Ectochrome and print film and all the that stuff. The one twenty and the uh, the one twenty and the thirty five millimeter. Thirty five millimeter, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Those uh, again. Yeah. A little bit of our retro history here at Balloon Fiesta and a sign of how things have changed. Now everybody just has a phone in their pocket and pulls it out and takes a ton of pictures. That's or right. Or has a camera in their pocket that also makes phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what most of that yeah, <laughs> is, yeah. Depends on, you know, what your primary objective is, I suppose. There you go. Yeah. I carry a camera in my pocket that takes phone calls. Yeah. Or some, like you, you know, take phone calls on their watch. That's it. I haven't, I haven't gone that far yet. You know, it's it's uh, actually nice because especially with a text message or something on your, you, you know, you get the little haptic tick on your on your wrist, and so you can just take a look at it and get an idea of who's g g trying to get in touch with you or what that is. And I still tend to pick up my phone to go read the full message unless I can just unless it's a two or three word one. But as long as we're we're telling war stories about photography, Larry Stevens says, Glenn Moyer, tell the story of selling a photo of Hearts of Fire for fifty bucks. I need it for my bingo. Well, <laughs> Larry is absolutely correct. One of my first fiestas here, I took a great picture of the balloon Hearts of Fire, which our friends uh, Malcolm White and uh, Pauline Baker from Ireland are flying here this week. And um, I ended up making contact with a, uh, a postcard company in Plano, Texas, and I sold that photograph to them uh, that they then put on a postcard for 50 bucks. It was one of my first sales as a... Uh, a quote-unquote professional photographer, if you will, and um, you've it, been a professional lots of things. I have been, which tells you I do a lot of things fairly de fairly good, but not very much very well. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, I that was one. Actually, I sold them three or four photographs, as a matter of fact, but all for fifty bucks, and that's all I ever made. And they've sold that. Uh, they're probably selling that postcard to this very day, and that was in <laughs> nineteen. 1984, I think, when I took that photograph, when I was here for the first time as a spectator. So there you go, Larry. Check that off on your bingo, bingo. card. I hope you won. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of like the uh, Zia balloon of the McConnell plan. Uh, obviously, it's been around since the very early days, multiple variations of that as the fabric wears out and they replace it. Uh, but such an iconic balloon uh, with the pictures, there are it just shows up on all kinds of things. It's on city yeah. buses here. Um, it's people, a, just, people just put it wherever. Well, and it's amazing to me when you look at postcards of Balloon Fiesta and calendars and things like that, uh, even in books, you, you st it, to me, you always sort of seem to see the same bunch of balloons. Um, you know, I flew my balloon here for a number of years, and it was like I never got into a, a calendar or a postcard or whatever. I finally did. There was uh, one... Uh, picture that was taken, and it ended up in uh, a few different uh, print modes. In fact, I have a, an old checkbook cover at home, and it, and it was on oh, a checkbook okay. cover. Um, we have placemats, table placemats with yeah, our balloon on it. Yeah, okay, but, but I almost, you know, Yellow Rose almost never, although I do have, now did we do, we do that anymore? Because um, I was in a glow one of my first years here, and I was assigned on row A, and I uh -huh. flew my balloon Yellow Rose, and, and in the Yellow Rose, the parachute top. We've talked a little bit about them. In fact, there's a great shot of a uh, smiley face uh, on, the, on parachute the, top, the parachute top. Well, my parachute top in the yellow rose was a Texas flag. And in the old days, I don't know if we still do it, but they used to have a, a photo plane would fly over the balloon glows and they would take uh, a photograph of an all burn. And then a few days later, you could buy an eight by 10 print of that picture. Well, I've got that photo at home and, and it was easy to spot my balloon because yes. I had looked down and see that Texas flag right in the parachute top of the balloon. So the answer to the question is we still put a photo plane up. We still capture those pictures. Uh, we just don't make them available you don't for sale do the anymore. Print and we sell don't, the print we don't anymore. do the print. No, okay. we don't do that. Yeah. Well, again, that's a little bit of our history because they used to do that. You could go a day or two later over to one of the booths and, and buy the print of the uh, balloon glow, and, and I've got that one at home, and having a Texas flag in the top of my balloon made it easy to spot. There's one of those cameras that does phone calls on a, on a stick. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
who's the uh, ventriloquist? What's what's the deal? Honestique. Honestique. The he had. Yeah, Jeff Dunham. And what's the character? He has the. Uh, is it the jalapeno that's on? Um, Jose, the jalapeno on a steak. <laughs> yeah. Talking to our truck there. Thanks to the truck. They always help fill us in when we draw a blank. Speaking of on a steak or peppers, there is the uh, red green balloon, the new visit Albuquerque balloon, which asks the official state question red or green, and does it in a brilliant way with half the balloon being a green theme and half the balloon being a red theme. And, and it was interesting, they did it vertically as opposed to, you know, the top half of the balloon being red, the bottom half being green. They, they did an entire side of the balloon in the uh, different colors. And so the red or green balloon is uh, coming up. They're putting some heat into the balloon. You can see it both here on the field and also on our feed. Oh, look at this. There's a great cool shot. Picture. Of... Have you noticed that the number of cowboy hats on Tristan's crew has grown every Exponentially day? every day. Every day. Yeah, every yeah. day. I, I'm just a little disappointed they haven't brought us a cowboy hat. We'll have to know. talk to Tristan about that. <laughs> There's the red side. We were looking at the green before. There's the red side. And, of course, the uh, official state question, red or green, featured in our brand new drone show that we have seen. That's right. That's a number right. of times here at Balloon Fiesta. It was on both Saturday and Sunday mornings. And Started at all of us our off evening this morning. Events. It did. Got a fabulous reception every morning and evening that it flew. So we are, uh, this being our last event, we have seen the drone show for the last time this year. Oh. Well, I can fix that because we recorded it for yeah. you early in the week, and it is now listed as one of the shows on our Blue Fiesta <laughs> live page. Oh, there you go. There's our, our crack, crack uh, wind fire production team doing that a is split not, screen. That is not two balloons. That, that is, is one, one balloon, balloon. Red on one side, green on the other. Yeah. What a great, uh, what a great job on putting that together, and then of course being able to show you both sides at exactly the same time. Just another. Uh, well, we have a crack production team here with Windfire Productions, and a great team to work with. Yeah, there you see, we take it out. It's part of the uh, fleet operated by the Rainbow Riders Group. Not only do they provide balloon rides to those of you who would have a balloon ride on your bucket list, but also provide corporate balloon flights. So the Visit Albuquerque, the uh, Tourism Department, the Visit of City of Albuquerque, you saw Pinnacle Propane there, who provides propane for all of our pilots and uh, pro propane for whatever use you may need propane for here in Albuquerque and around the country. I also saw in there the Indian Cultural Pueblo, the Indian Cultural Pueblo, Indian Pueblo Cultural Center. Easy for gotta, you to say. Got to get the words in the right order. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's think, another um, one that they've been flying around town. People get an opportunity to get their balloon ride as well as having the balloon in the sky as well. I think Dos Equis is also one of That's their corporate one clients. Of yes, it yeah. is. And uh, the boss, Scott Appleman, flies the Dos Equis branded balloon. So again, we do have a green flag. So far, our ride balloons are getting inflated. I saw them put some air in the Xfinity balloon. What, what is this? What is this? Cowboy aerobics or, or line dancing out there they're doing? What, what's going on there? Tristan's team loosening up, I yeah, guess. Yeah, loosening up for the flight here. Doing some pre-flight calisthenics. The they, launch they, director has joined in, or the zit has joined in, yeah. anyway. Yeah, that's the, uh, the referee suit with the red hat. Right, and that is a zebra in training, which we lovingly refer to as zits. We're not being disrespectful to anyone. Oh, yeah, the launch director is there beside her. Yeah, she I thought there was a... Got yeah. the, oh, got she, a she got a cowboy she's hat got as well. The, the, not only a cowboy hat, she's got the Western-themed uh, referee jacket. See the fringe on oh, yeah, the jacket? Yeah, yeah and those yeah. pink gloves. Yeah, looking, looking stylish down there, team. <laughs> Getting these pictures from our balloon cam, which isn't in the balloon yet. But will be if they go flying this morning. And, you know, this is one of those days as a pilot, okay, it's been nine days I've been out here. I've been on the road a few days to get here. I've got a few days 
drive back. Um, I, I need to have a, a nice, safe flight if I'm going to do that. It's uh, calming down on the ground. The reports are there's a fast layer, pretty quick, no. right above us. The term I heard was zippy, zippy yeah. which is not a term I've heard before. A, a zippy layer. A zippy layer, layer right there. <laughs> That's true. That was the term that uh, Peg used, our assistant balloon meister. But that all the reporting stations that we have up around town are all now reporting calm winds. Well, we've talked about, maybe this is where you're going, I don't mean to interrupt. Um, we've talked all week about even when we put up a green flag, it is always the pilot's discretion. They have the final decision whether or not to fly. And I think maybe where you were going, or if you're not, I'll go there. I was going there. A lot of these pilots, uh, as you say, they've been on the road, you know, they traveled perhaps two or three days to get here. We've had nine rather difficult, challenging days, let's be honest, about Balloon Fiesta this week. Now they're weather on the challenging. weather challenge, that's what I mean. But it's yep. been it's been physically challenging with sleep patterns interrupted and flying and weather, et cetera. Um, and now they're facing maybe a, a two-day, I've got a two-day drive to get home uh, starting tomorrow. So some of them are probably saying, you know, I really would like to fly today, but maybe I'm too tired, maybe, you know, whatever, whatever. There may be some pilots out there that, you know, are, are really just taking a long, hard decision about, do I really want to get in the air today? Am I going to be completely safe? Uh, if I do so, maybe it's better that I stay on the ground because I do have travel to do and they have to get back and pack and all those kinds of things. Well, and where I was headed with that is this is the day I would not want to be the first one in the air. So I'm going to kind of sit back and watch a little bit. We'll watch some of the other pilots, those that uh, may do this more often, fly daily for a living. We'll see. Uh, we'll let, let somebody else be the first one in the air. Um, we usually affectionately call them the wind dummy. Yeah, the wind dummy. And so watch for them to be able to get in the air and then literally see what is happening up there. How zippy is a is zippy that, layer? Is that layer. And there may be some concern, well, if that layer's up there, at what did they, I think Peg was saying, like 250 feet, something yeah. like that. You know, if it is up there, is it going to come down? If I get am in I the gonna air. Am I going to have to land in if it? If I get in the air now, am I going to maybe have to land in a zippy layer? And that's challenging and not always a great deal of fun. Winds, so just be aware there's a zippy okay. layer around 300 feet. Yeah, that's, uh, we're listening again to our, one of our assistant balloon meisters, Peg, who's telling the pilots that the surface winds around the field are at about five to seven knots, but that zippy layer is still at about two to 300 feet where the winds are 15 knots. So there's right. double the speed, um, at least in some cases, maybe triple the speed uh, at just about two to 300 feet. There goes one of our first Rainbow Riders balloon as they ascend we will begin to get a look at that zippy layer perhaps and uh, that may be what a lot of pilots are waiting on is to see uh, just you know visually what does that layer of speed look like before they make a commitment to uh, whether they're going to fly or not today and as I said I think some of them probably too are, are probably um, assessing their own you know physical condition to fly uh, as far as rest and um, just Maybe part of the process crew. that you go yeah. through as a pilot before you actually commit to aviation on a particular day. Yeah, because once you get up there, you got to come down. And it's not like you can pull over at a gas station and ask directions or pull into a rest stop and, and relax for a few minutes. Once you're in the air, you got to be a pilot the whole time you're there. It takes concentration. You've got to be on the top of your game. And uh, maybe, you know, some folks, maybe just, I know I, I would be hesitant if I were here as a pilot, I'd be hesitant to fly today because I'm just worn out. I'm exhausted. Um, yeah, like we say, takeoffs are optional, but landings, landings are, are mandatory. Not. Yeah, that's right. So another uh, balloon has gotten airborne over on the east side of the field. And I guess I should uh, wake up my spotter app so that I can start seeing. Well, I was going to say, we I, I, I identified that balloon earlier during competition, and I don't remember now who it was. You're talking about the yellow balloon with the multicolored spires on it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was in the competition one day, and I remember finding it in the database and identifying it for you, I think, down on the field, but I've forgotten now who that was. Gee, there's only 650 here. How come you can't remember them all? You know, yeah. one, one slipped my mind. 
Uh, well, okay, as long as that's the only one. Yeah, ju just one, but <laughs> yeah, one slipped to my mind. What can I tell you? Yeah, let's see who can find it before they get over the top of us. Well, I'm not looking at that one. I'm looking no. for this one, which is the farmer's balloon. The balloon oh, I could have told you that one. Well, see, it <laughs> says uh, that is the balloon is called Cruise Control. Rod Baca, of course, flying for farmers. His 31st year here at Balloon Fiesta and out of Los Lunas, New Mexico, just down the road a bit. So there goes uh, the Farmer's Insurance and their beautiful red, white, and blue balloon. Speaking of red, white, and blue, the uh, Team GB, the Great Britain balloon, is also in the sky with the uh, Union Jack. That is the uh, name of their national flag. I'm still looking for that one. I know. I, yeah, it's going to be long. Well, I know. It takes a while. I, that's yeah, what I, was saying I didn't about put enough color sources in there so um, for that particular balloon to find it. There it is. Diamond. Steve Williams was the yellow one with the darts in it. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's who. And that's Eric Greenwood on our screen with the enchantment balloon. Mostly yellow with the silhouette or the shapes of the New Mexico of New Mexico. I should have known um, Steve's as well. And there goes red or green from Visit Albuquerque, their new balloon. Meanwhile, the uh, 9643 News Radio KKOB balloon is still standing up at the stage. They were our balloon of the day, but chose to remain static. Smoky Bear looks like it's getting inflated over near the main stage as well. And uh, isn't Beth Wright, is Beth Wright Smith yes. flying Smoky yep. this year? Okay. She is. And, you know, we've talked a lot about the red-green balloon, but we, I don't think we've ever mentioned that Anthony Lard is actually flying it. Well, maybe not. Um, Anthony came up to the uh, party on the roof last night. Oh, he did? Yeah, he came through the uh, anteroom here as we were all sitting in there and said hello uh, as he came up onto the, uh, what was that, the Cheers for 50 Years party last night? Yes. Is that what they called that? We invited a number of city and state and county leaders to let them enjoy Balloon Fiesta. Just in time to have them shelter in place. <laughs> they got the full experience. They did, yeah, they, they got to see what it was all about. There is the uh, Rio Grande, or Rio Grande, depending on whether you say potato or potato. Uh, the Rio Grande Down Syndrome balloon. Beautiful sky blue with white accents. Um, their banner on the side. Tony Polito flies that one. Rainbow Riders balloons, more of them getting airborne now. And I haven't seen, well, I mean, there goes red green right over the top of this. There may be, I don't see a real zippy layer yet. Maybe they're all just underneath it. That's the layer, that's where it should be. It, yeah, they look about that high two to 300 feet. Um, but as I say, maybe they're just slightly underneath it. Um, and there you get a shot as how big some of the Rainbow Rider balloons yeah. and therefore baskets are. And their baskets are. are. They carry a bunch of people. people. One of them in the air now with the uh, Arizona flag and a diamond center of the balloon, uh, to a certain extent representative of the fact that uh, Scotty not only does balloon rides here in um, Albuquerque, but Rainbow Riders also operate, as other uh, ride operators do, um, up in the uh, Scottsdale, Phoenix uh, area in Arizona. And he has an operation in Colorado Springs. Colorado Springs as well, yeah. Yeah, he's branched out. Becoming quite the balloon ride mogul is our friend Scotty. <laughs> and Rainbow Riders, the sponsor of our navigators, the volunteers here at Balloon Fiesta as well. There goes the Indian Pueblo Cultural Center balloon you were speaking of not long ago. Again, one of they are uh, Twisting part. the words around I were. You were, yes. They were. Um, they are a part of the uh, Rainbow Rider fleet. But rather than in the typical yellow with rainbow accent patterns on the side, they uh, have the art of the Indian Pueblo Cultural Center. But still part of the Rainbow Rider's fleet. Look at the difference in the color of the new balloons and the older ones. See that, that one Rainbow Rider's balloon going up that's just Cool. The yellow is just beaming in the sunlight. And some of the others show that they've been around for a while. Well, I would tell you that the Indian Pueblo Cultural Center balloon was originally white. 
And was it really? It has now See, taken it on. Looks, it looks beige to it me. It has now taken on the adobe color. Well, okay, that's of a, the yeah, sand adobe. here You're in right. New Mexico. You're right. Yes, yeah. it, it was when it first. Uh, it was white. It huh? was. It's, I didn't yeah, know that. It's a white balloon. It's just not white anymore. It's just yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, and that takes right. us back to that story I told earlier this year when you used to be able to buy uh, used balloons, and they would some ads would say never float in Albuquerque because uh, yeah because the white fabric didn't turn you know. It is really a treat for us to fly off of this field because it is all grass. I've been seeing a number of posts this week, and actually um, on as, as well. Hey, I took off on grass and I landed, landed on, on grass. grass. And, yeah, uh, that's kind of an amazing feat here in Albuquerque. Yeah, we used to post whenever in the old days again. You know, wherever you could find a grass uh, a park or something, the green space to land in here in Albuquerque, it was quite a thing to land on grass. Yep. Speaking well, of the, even new the first, I'm sorry, even uh, if the first year we were here, only the very south end of the field was right. Grass it was in done north, in yeah. section, yeah. sections. I, I mean, I can remember the first couple of years I came when we flew off one of the old fields when uh, you literally, when you arrived at your launch site, you went around and you picked up the bigger rocks yes. and moved them off to the side. You, you kind of, we saw how the, uh, the team that uh, Ruth was with, they had those uh, lights kind of marking their square. their square. Well, we used to go around and pick up the bigger rocks and move them. So when you laid your balloon out on that caliche, the gravel or whatever you want to call it. Well, it um, was a gravel pit. Yeah, it was. And so the, the bigger rocks in the gravel pit were not something you laid your balloon down on. Um, now it's uh, such a privilege to fly off of this beautiful park with all the green grass. Uh, again, just some of the great changes we've seen in the 50 year history of uh, Balloon Fiesta. I think I was uh, doing an interview with Ray Todd just the other morning, and she asked, what, what's the biggest thing you've seen change in the 50 years? And I said, well, you know, the most significant is that we now have a, a green grass launch field. A lot of changes. Um, but the green grass launch field, I think, kind of tops everything. It's a pilot favorite. The was, other interesting thing is to take an aerial picture of the field the day or two before Balloon Fiesta, and you see how green and nice the park looks, yeah. and then take one a day or two after Fiesta, and, and you it looks see, a little tired. It, yeah, <laughs> it is definitely, you, you see the wear and tear on the park. Yes, you do. With nine days. So I was going to mention a moment ago, we talked earlier about Dos Equis being a more part of the corporate fleet of uh, Rainbow Riders, and their new balloon is standing up, and that would be Scott Appleman flying there as the pilot. Just beside him is the uh, Phillips 66 balloon. And I believe Brad Rice is flying the Phillips 66 balloon. Okay. But I'm seeing a few more pilots now deciding to go ahead and stand their balloon up. They've seen four or five, six balloons get in the air. They've seen how fast the zippy layer is up there. And so uh, more of them are now saying, okay, that's not too zippy for me. Well, and I don't see, another consideration this morning might be is, I don't see any sign of a box yet. Now, Brad T. Meyer did say earlier this morning it might be a very tall box, but at the moment, no one's coming back over us. And so as we're headed north to south, that takes us into a more populated area where there are fewer landing zones uh, than one might like. And we're not headed out to uh, the northwest, one of our favorite areas, to get out to the West Mesa where there's plenty of landing sites. So that might be a consideration for some pilots I would think so. this morning as well. Yep. Actually, what did I say, four or five, six? Look at there, there's like a dozen in the air already. Yeah. Dos Equis just getting airborne, the balloon rocking just a bit as they released it. There he goes. But he's climbing out over near the main stage. So the balloons, as they cold inflate and hot inflate, are required to be tied off to a vehicle with a tie-off line, obviously, right. so that they don't go airborne inadvertently or before everyone is ready for them to go. And on a day when it might be just a little breezy, you will get buoyant, hot enough to fly, and you will fly out to the end of that tie-off line so that you're, you're in the air, but you're being held back, and then you release that tie-off line. And sometimes if you don't do that perfectly smoothly, what will happen is you'll get a little you bit of a little rock bit of like that as you take off. Yeah. And as you see, it settles down within, within uh, seconds, really. Yeah. You'll get a little bit of a pendulum motion there for a moment. 
I like to, uh, as someone else is taking off, actually create that effect on them by uh, giving the basket a little shove, <laughs> a little shove. or hang on to it, yeah. and start them rocking. Um, just uh, have a little bit of fun um, you, as you, well. You old meanie. Yeah, yeah, I get that. <laughs> yeah, I don't do it often. I, I do it to the people who I know don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, first time I've seen this banner this weekend, which is odd because they're taking off from row A right in front of us. Uh, Champions Wash here. This is for the Champion Express Car Wash. Um, I can always remember, you know, uh, again, referencing back to some of my earlier years here when um, part of my contract was that Fiesta provided me with a courtesy vehicle, and those usually came from Don Chalmers Ford. And then before you could return the car, though, you had to wash it. So, oh, yeah. so I had to hunt down on a Sunday afternoon uh, after our morning flight. I had to go hunting for uh, preferably one of those drive-through automatic car washes. So because they then turned around and sold those cars at a at a good discount because right. they really couldn't be sold as brand new because they had been used. Mine usually very lightly used, just driven around the city of Albuquerque for eight or nine days. Um, but. Um, and I ended up, because of that, one year when I was out here, I drove home a brand new Ford Expedition that I purchased oh, at nice. uh, Don Chalmers Ford. So that Champion Car Wash Balloon is actually named X-Max, piloted by Richard Davenport from Florida. Ah, there goes Philip 66. Excuse me while I have a bit of a nap attack here this morning. And we mentioned earlier the Arizona Rainbow Riders balloon. Here's the New Mexico brand. Oh, one. yeah, yeah, with the Zia in the diamond on the side. That's very nice. And actually, there is a Roadrunner and Coyote in the pattern right above the skirt of that balloon. We can see the Coyote from our side as he goes right over the west side of our rooftop studio. Also inflated in the south end of the park here is uh, the beautiful uh, Forget-Me-Not balloon of... Uh, uh, Garrett Hillary, the, uh, this is their first year at AIBF at the Balloon Fiesta from Scales Mound, Illinois. And if memory serves, I think they've done a, a whole series of knot balloons. That's a Celtic knot um, that you see on the side of the balloon and the green, blue, and purple, the interlocked uh, Celtic knot, uh, referencing, of course, the colors that are in the balloon, greens, blues, purples, and a bright yellow equator. So we have told our pilots that if you're going to fly, we'd like to get you up and in the air. And there are pilots who are asking about doing a static display. We want to get those that are going to fly up and out, and then we'll allow the field to be inflated for static displays. I do see down on the uh, end of our south end of our field here, the Fiesta Gold balloon being inflated. Yeah, right beside uh, Tomas Hara, who's inflating uh, G Daddy or the Texas Twist. Uh, with which, you know, he won a poll and $2,000 in our competition earlier this week. So based on the proximity of those two, my guess is that it would be Mark Sullivan who would be standing up the Fiesta Gold. Fiesta balloon. Gold and then Tomas Hora flying uh, G-Daddy. Yep. That would be my, uh, my assumption too. I don't know about a static display though. To me, it's still a bit breezy on the surface. I, I understand. Uh, I just I continue to hear that there are no, pilots I, asking sure. about doing that. I understand. I, I'm just saying, as a pilot myself, it, it would appear to me it's still a bit breezy on the field to do a static display. Though, you know, the uh, forget-me-not's been standing there for a few minutes now without any great difficulty. Without any, yeah. So, uh, well, remember, it's calming down here on the ground. It's that zippy layer above. And then... And reporting are, stations around the area reporting calm winds. So we are slightly above field level as well. We are. And there goes your knot balloon. Yep, there goes uh, Garrett Hillary. First time at Balloon Fiesta. Fiesta. <laughs> I think my voice is beginning to go. There's the <coughs> brand new U.S. Air Force balloon. Yes, indeed. They are celebrating a lot of anniversaries. We've talked about this earlier this year. A lot of anniversaries here at the park this year. The 50th for Balloon Fiesta, the 25th for the America's Challenge. Put them together and you have the 75th anniversary of the United States Air Force. And uh, you will find um, the U.S. Air Force 
with their own uh, booth or tent or marquee, depending on your term, uh, along Main Street where they have some of their recruiters here and they are, of course, promoting the variety of career choices that one can make in the U.S. Air Force. It's not all about being a pilot. You can be a member of the Air Force, serve in the Air Force without ever having to be a pilot. That balloon made by Kubitschek and made just in time for it to debut here at the Balloon Fiesta. I did not know that. I knew it, well, I knew it was yeah. built by Kubitschek. I knew it was fairly new. I didn't realize it was debuting here. That's quite nice. That is. There was a uh, kind of a scramble. The Air Force decided that they wanted to have a balloon here at Balloon Fiesta and uh, frankly went to a number of different manufacturers. Can you build it in time for Balloon Fiesta? And the Kubitschek family and factory stepped up and said, we can do it. And they did. And it looks oh, great. It does. And in the past, we have had the U.S. Navy used to have quite an active balloon oh, they did. team. Yeah. Um, and, uh, of course, Kevin Knapp, my good friend, flew the U.S. Army balloon for a number of years. Um, so the other services. Um, and then, you know, the Sokov Thomas fleet included Chesty the Bulldog. Yes. Which was an homage to the mascot of the U.S. Marine Corps. So we've had all of the, I d have we had a Coast Guard balloon here? I was here? just thinking, I, I don't can't remember recall that. One. So maybe, I was about to say we've had all of the services represented at some point in time, but maybe not. Maybe the Coast Guard has not had a balloon here. Uh-oh, we finally going to hear from the uh, weather guy. <laughs> we never could get him. He never would come to the tower to speak to us, so we've tracked him down. He Ruth, hung out backstage yeah, uh, all week. That's yeah. right, yeah. Ruth has uh, tracked down our weather guru for the event, Mr. Brad T. Meyer. So let's see what Brad has to say for himself after this week. Ruth, take it away. Well, Brad never says no to me. I don't know why he would say no to you going up on the stage. <laughs> Maybe he was just waiting for me to come over here. Brad, my cameraman, Tom, joked a couple minutes ago, we don't know if we're going to be able to see your face <laughs> on the camera in the sun because we've only seen you in the rain all week. Yeah, it's been a brutal week this year. Have you ever seen anything like this, I mean, for a whole week? Not at least here in Balloon Fiesta. You know, sometimes we'll get into a tough pattern, but where it just doesn't evolve, and that's kind of what we had here this week, where it just, it was just a stubborn low that just wouldn't go away. Tell us why. Why did it stick around so long? Well, we had the uh, hurricane that went up the east coast there, and it kind of blocked everything from progressing west to east. And then when that broke down, we still had an upper low basically across the lower southwest portion of the U.S., and so that just brought more inclement weather and, and certainly not balloon-friendly flying weather by any means. So it was a typical lemony, snicket, unfortunate event. Yes, but when you have lemons, you got to make lemonade. So we found those windows of opportunity, right? We did. We actually got a lot done this week, a lot more than many of us thought we would be able to. How, how was your work with the Fiesta officials going forward? Was there a lot more for you to be involved with this year? Yeah, that's the trick, is that when the weather is not ideal, we have to do a lot of extra work in terms of trying to figure out what we can do with the conditions that we have. So we really tried to make the most of every opportunity that we had um, and, and take advantage of, of anything that we've got to, to put on a show for our guests. We really did, and the event officials were so good at that. I, I think every single session we at least got something done, and you're a big part of that. Thank you so much for your work, Brad. And I'm going to hang out here with my friend, my close personal friend, Brad, because he's here with me and not on the stage. Back <laughs> okay. to you guys. Yeah. All right, Ruth, we get the message. That's yeah, we it. get the message. Um, That's why we keep her around. She can get places to that, people and bring us stories we just right. can't do. Yep. That's it. Great she, job, Ruth. Thanks to Brad as well <laughs> for joining us. We actually, we've been joking with him. He keeps saying, I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there if the weather would ever let if up. The weather, or, yeah. He, he has probably been, you know, Ruth was talking about all the work that Sam and uh, Henry did throughout the week. I don't know if anyone worked harder than Brad this week. Uh, I mean, he's been constantly on edge. Uh, monitoring all of the weather and trying to advise our officials as to what would be safe to do and what not. Um, yeah, so, it's this far yeah. away. Now it's this close. You can, can expect this in the next 10 minutes. All those kinds of predictions yeah. coming along. And uh, us making safety decisions throughout the week based on 
what he was observing and his knowledge of the weather and the weather systems. You know, and, and your weather guy at a balloon meet is kind of like the quarterback of a football team. He gets all the glory, but he also gets all the blame. That's right. So it's been a tough week for Brad, but he's held up well, and, and the man really knows his stuff. I will he say does. that. He's, he does do that. Um, yeah. He's one of the top-notch uh, weather folks as far as ballooning weather is concerned, um, certainly in the United States and, uh, and, and indeed around the world. And he's been um, obviously traveling to all these different balloon events, and of course, well, he was over in Slovenia for the World Championships. You know, yeah. I was at the UK at at uh, Longleat at Sky Safari. You were in Plano, Texas. Uh, Brad was over in Slovenia. Seems like an especially busy ballooning system uh, time frame in the last two the months. Last, yeah, I think August, September were particularly yeah. uh, busy. The Gordon Bennett was going on. The World Championships were happening. Um, you know, a lot of other just normally scheduled events were going on, but yeah, we were all, um, have all been traveling quite a bit uh, in the last month or so. We just saw a nice shot of uh, the G Daddy balloon standing up and the top of the Fiesta Gold. Yeah. Um, we, a lot of times, obviously, once the balloon stands up, it's difficult to see what the top looks like. There's the G Daddy, that's why we call it, that is its right. registration number. But the yellow Fiesta Gold balloon. Um, again, we believe that that is Mark Sullivan standing that up. You see the replicas of the original 13 on the side of that balloon, and there in the parachute top, the black silhouette of the Sid Cutter statue that is just outside the Sid Cutter Pilot Pavilion. So, Sid, checking over things while you're cold inflating, and once you're in the air, watching over you in flight. Yep. And now, that, that statue and the silhouette you see there that it represents, um, were actually modeled after, uh, that was kind of a popular pose that Sid would often take Very when popular. flying in his balloon. So that's Sitting kind on of the, the side, kind of hanging yeah, on and waving. And waving to folks. So that's kind of the, the backstory behind the statue and uh, the silhouette is that it's something that, uh, that's a pose that Sid very often would uh, take up while flying his balloons. So that is the statue that is over there. We have made miniatures of that statue that go to the overall champion Right. Here at Balloon Fiesta. So Alan Anderson did take home one of those mini statues as part of his overall champion award package. Yeah, and congratulations to Alan again for his championship. There goes Tomas Sora in uh, G Daddy going out a bit hot this morning. And as you can see, pulling the vent to slow, slow that ascent, ascent yeah. rate, uh, although he's clear above, so not a real issue. That Fiesta Gold Balloon, you may remember, built here at Balloon Fiesta last year. That's right. Over in the Sid Cutter Pilots Pavilion. Another one of those top secret projects. Um, no one knew what was going on until, oh, wait, they're sewing. You think they're sewing a balloon? Yeah. And then on the last Saturday, we actually revealed that balloon. Yeah. right here on the field and live on Balloon Fiesta Live. And, you can go back and watch that. And that logo that you see with the... Uh, the diamond in the various shades of turquoise with the 50 logo in the center of it. That's what's on that retail jacket you were exactly. discussing earlier that uh, the uh, balloonfiestastuff.com on Wednesday is going to open up. And um, if you weren't able to get one of those jackets here at Fiesta, maybe they didn't, they were already sold out of your size, whatever. Um, they're going to open that up for a 10 day pre-order for one final order which will be here in time for you to give them as Christmas gifts or to wear them for the holidays. Uh, so balloonfiestastuff.com on Wednesday is when you'll be able to pre-order your exactly. um, jacket with the uh, Fiesta Gold logo if you'd like to have one of those. And just like the balloon has the replicas of the 13, which actually goes around the balloons, on the jacket it goes around that turquoise design. So okay. you have all those as well. All right. Um, You'll be able to check out the design again when we open this, the online store back up. And uh, there might be a few of those jackets left in our merchandise tent, so yeah. you could at least go over there and take a look at it and then order it online starting on Wednesday. Well, again, they, balloonfiestastuff.com. They may still even have your size there, depending they on, might. you know, they're probably they might. size limited in terms of, probably somewhat limited in terms of inventory by, by this date late in the Fiesta. But you could at least get a look at it and decide, hey, I'd like one of those. Well, then on Wednesday, you can go online to balloonfiestastuff.com and purchase. 
uh, or pre-order one. Pre-order one. Pre which order also one. means purchase. Uh, I mean. It does. It does. Hey, there's Arabelle uh, getting cold inflated. Well, I thought I saw Arabelle getting cold inflated a while ago, but I wasn't sure because it's a little breezy, I would think, for uh, for Arabelle to be inflating. She normally prefers kind of calm weather. but um, Well, maybe a final dry out. Make sure that it's truly dry. Yeah, that could be as well. I think I saw on our feed someone uh, suggested that it took about five hours to dry out the little dog balloon um, because you can only just continue to blow cold air through it and the balloons were so soaked after the other night that it does take a while. And of course, the other thing is with all the showers in the area, it's pretty humid around here. And so that moisture that's in the balloon has to go back into the air. And if the air is already saturated, it takes a lot longer for that to happen. Yeah, I, I told the story earlier this week. I won't tell it again. Take, but take a peek that way while you talk. Oh, okay. Do you want me to talk or just both? Look, oh, or just look, <laughs> look or just look good. Look, I don't think I can do that. You can't part. do both. You can't do both. Yeah, I, I can't. Well, I can't do both, and at I'm really not time. very good at doing looking good anyway. Yeah. Um, no, I was going to say with regard to drying out those balloons. I told the story earlier this week, and I won't retell it now. But the time when uh, I got caught in a rainstorm flying a factory balloon for Thunder and Colt. We took it into an indoor facility, our, you know, our uh, your factory, your factory. Um, and blew cold air through it for three days. And wow. we were not able to completely yeah. dry it and save it. We ended up having to replace the, uh, the parachute and the top three panels. I, I can say the last I heard, Fiesta officials were quite proud of the fact because of uh, how the community responded in opening up those huge arenas so we could get those balloons in and cold inflated and dried. There has been no report of any damage to any of the shapes that were um, soaked in that pop-up storm that caught us on uh, Thursday evening. Thank you, Albuquerque, Rio Rancho, U UN University of New Mexico, yeah. and all the other agencies and organizations that stepped up to help us out. We Absolutely. Definitely appreciate that. Saw Dale Ruth get airborne in his Dawn's Delight. He was one of our Dawn Patrol pilots this week. He used to work with a guy in radio named Dale Ruth, different guy. No relation, but just you're mentioning that name just brought back that memory to me. He used to live on the, the same street as uh, my mom and dad over in Beaumont back in the, oh, goodness, when was that? I don't probably know. Mid, probably mid-70s because I, uh, I was working at the local TV station uh, doing the uh, 6 and 10 o'clock news as a sports reporter, and then I would get off the set at 10 o'clock, and I would drive to uh, Lake Charles, Louisiana, and do a midnight to 6 a.m. shift as a disc jockey on a radio station in Lake Charles. And then I would get off the air at 6 a.m. and drive back home uh, to Beaumont about, um, yeah, I guess that's maybe an hour's drive, thereabouts. Um, those were some crazy times when you're young and indestructible and working in radio and television. You do those kinds of crazy things. So the Fiesta Gold Balloon now standing up. You can see that beautiful gold logo, the Golden 50, reflecting in the sunlight and that uh, gorgeous turquoise diamond background. Somebody's got, there you go. Thanks for turning the squelch down. Uh, also behind the Fiesta Gold is the U.S. Bank Balloon. Uh, that's a balloon I believe Nick Donner was flying in competition. Nick finished in the top three. He was in third place overall flying for um, Scott McClinton, who was called away because of a family uh, issue. Uh, so Nick stepped in and flew the balloon for him. Cameron Wall getting airborne in his gorgeous balloon called Grandma's Legacy. Uh, the story behind that balloon is his grandmother is quite the, uh, uh, the painter, and uh, she likes to paint undersea, uh, underwater scenes. And so uh, Cameron took a number of her paintings and then uh, I think the balloon was built by Kubacek, as I recall. And uh, so they took those paintings and reproduced them, printed them onto basically white balloon fabric and then sewed the balloon together. And so all those, uh, the fish and the um, underwater vegetation and whatnot that you see on the balloon, that's all uh, from paintings done by Cameron's grandmother. So that's quite a, a unique piece of art bit of art on that balloon. And it is a Koopa check. It is, okay, I was, I was pretty sure it was. We did a story about the balloon and Cameron and his grandmother in Ballooning Magazine. I was just, it's been a few months ago and I was trying to remember 
My memory isn't always what it could be. <laughs> you know, that's uh, the scary thing is I saw a, a, a report on my phone this morning. There's some study done that said 61% of seniors will eventually succumb to Alzheimer's or dementia. Whoa. Almost two thirds. That's a scary. I mean, it is a scary. My mo my mom, bless her heart, is dealing with it right now. Um, Tommy Rutherford, our past announcer, um, was debilitated by that uh, cruel disease. And um, yeah, a new study says that 61 percent of adults may eventually suffer from some level of dementia or Alzheimer's. That's kind of a scary thought. Just a moment ago on our live picture, we saw the blue balloon with the yellow zia on it. Sunflower, sunflyer flown by the Bacon family. There goes the balloon with the teddy bears on the side. I haven't discovered who that is yet. That was one of those that, that was one of those that came in at the last minute, um, showed up with kind of a new balloon. And I have that somewhere. I don't think I added it there, though. Let me go. Uh, I'm just curious. I went back to uh, like like we said, people have the, have um, shown up with yeah, new they, they or they different balloons. Exactly, they register with one balloon and then show up here with something else, and uh, and we don't know that and, or don't find out about it in time. And so our database, the spotting app that Art builds, um, doesn't have uh, the new picture. That's what happened with Alan Anderson. He was flying a a new racer balloon that uh, we didn't have a photo of, and so searches we might through the uh, the database, we weren't able to um, to find the balloon, and thus we were never really successful at identifying him when he was doing so well in the competition. Yeah. So I, I actually um, have a couple of in pieces of information here. I think the name they call that balloon Teddy Graham. Okay. Um, because Colin Graham owns it. Oh, okay. And then supposedly David Adler is flying it. And none of that lines up with the information I had in our spotter app. Of course. <laughs> but I got it from our uh, associate event director and also pilot coordinator, um, who is the person who has to deal with all those new balloons and pictures and documents that show up on registration days. I just realized I'm squinting quite a bit because of the sunlight, so I do have my, my sunglasses with me, but that then limits my ability to see my iPad and my iPhone screen to some extent. So there's Arabelle, and in the forefront of the picture, the U.S. bank balloon. We uh, assume that Nick Donner has stood that up as Scott McClinton had to go home for a family yeah. issue. And our condolences out to Scott and the McClinton family. Meanwhile, as, Ruth as, continues her fabulous job of finding interesting people here on the field. Ruth? Oh my goodness, and this lady is one of the most interesting of them all. She's Peggy Bilson. She's the assistant balloon meister this year. Now, Peggy, this is your first year as assistant balloon meister. What's it been like for you? It's been quite the year of learning. I've been fortunate enough to start uh, with Balloon Fiesta as a launch director, as a zebra, and then a safety officer, and now as assistant balloon meister. That's a, that's a really great career path in terms of climbing up the ladder. And is the expectation that you will step in for Henry when he's done being balloon meister? I'm thrilled just to be part of the team any way I can serve. That's wonderful. Do you live right here in Albuquerque? Yes, I do. I've been here for 17 years. Are you also a balloon pilot? Uh, yes, of course I'm a balloon pilot. And, and my, my passion is flying. I've been flying since I was a teenager, airplanes. But what do you do when you retire in Albuquerque and your passion's flying? You become a balloon pilot. Exactly. Is it tough for you to not be flying at this year's Fiesta? We always miss it. Of course we miss it. You, you, as a pilot, you want to be up in the air. But, you know, all of the volunteers, we, we enjoy helping everybody else uh, be able to enjoy this wonderful event. Now, what kinds of things do you do as an assistant balloon meister? Uh, one of the things I do is coordinate with the FAA. The second is whatever Henry needs me to do. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, generally just, you know, help uh, in all the activities. There is plenty for everybody to do at all times. Have there been special things that you've had to do this year with all of the weather challenges that we've had? 
Well, one of my responsibilities is to do the pilot briefing for the GLOWS, the evening GLOWS. And so, as you know, that's been an, a particular challenge this year with the weather. And so, fortunately, we have a world-class weather team with us and with world-class information uh, for us to be watching it constantly. And so, if there has been a unique set of circumstances this year, that's been it. Wonderful. Peggy, thank you so much for all the work you do. We hope we'll see you back again next year. And I'm going to send it back to the stage to Art and Glenn. Thanks, Ruth. Um, Peg Bilson is also a uh, board member for the local balloon club, Quad A, the Albuquerque Aerostat Ascension Association, in charge of the Education Committee. Ah. So uh, kind of under her direction and leadership, working with me and a number of other people on the committee, the uh, Education Committee has put together a online private pilot ground school, an online commercial ground school, and we are in the middle of producing an online chase crew training class as well. Well, Peg has had a very difficult week because, as she said, she coordinates all of the balloon glows. Yes. And uh, I know she's been um, telling a little bit, maybe talking a bit out of turn, she's been fretting a bit because we didn't get any of the balloon glows off. I saw her here backstage last night. And I jokingly said, you know, Peg, we, we all think it's all your fault. <laughs> and, and she looked at me very seriously and says, I'm going to get fired. I'm going to get fired. <laughs> I, I'm sure Peg is not going to be fired. She's, uh, I don't think so. No, she's quite the accomplished uh, lady and uh, does great work. And just, you know, had the bad luck of, luck of the draw that her first year coordinating the balloon glows turned out to be this year when Mother Nature didn't cooperate with That's us. That's it. And she certainly doesn't have any blame associated with that. But... Uh, but yeah, she's, you know, like all of us, we're, we're disappointed and she's been disappointed that we weren't able to pull those gloves off, but um, her work and effort uh, in other areas of Balloon Fiesta are well noted. And recognized by the Quad A group yesterday as she is the latest recipient of the Sid Cutter Award. That is right, and you don't earn that if you haven't uh, paid your dues and earned your stripes, and so congratulations to Peg. And, it's been fun working with her for the first year, though we, you and I have not enjoyed the relationship we'd normally enjoy with the assistant balloon meister because generally they're right here at our side. Right here for uh, all of us. Calling the, all of the balloon glows. And because of the weather, Peg has instead been uh, huddled up with all of the other officials monitoring the weather, talking to Brad T. Meyer and Sam Parks and all those others uh, to make those decisions we had to make every evening on the balloon glow. So we really haven't, I personally have not had the chance to get to know Peg as I typically would um, a new balloon uh, assistant balloon meister, but I'm sure we'll be working with her again next year and look forward to that. You betcha. Sean Askren has stood up the Xfinity Rewards balloon, and a few moments ago I saw Phil Glebe take out the Intel balloon. Intel balloon, yeah. Take out as in lift as off. As in lift off, not, yeah, <laughs> as in destroyed or anything like yeah. that. And there's Smokey yeah. we talked about. Smokey is inflated, as is Arabelle the cow. The little dog is inflated down that uh, end of the field. Uh, and Olaf the clown is inflated down there as well. I just got a glimpse of it behind one of our... Um, uh, the fractal balloon. Thank you. I was about to say petroglyph or something. I, I knew it wasn't the right word. That's why I was uh and then ahing. The fractal balloon, another one of those printed on white fabric, right. like you were the, talking about camera yeah. walls balloons, yeah. The design is worked out uh, on a computer and then uh, it's printed out and then it is uh, literally printed onto white fabric and then sewn together. All the panels matched up and sewn together into a balloon. I, you know, Jonathan Wolf came and talked to our local balloon club about the production of that balloon. And you know, you think about it, these other balloons, you know, they have some yellow panels and they have some red ones and all these different colors. And if a panel were to get damaged, you would just take some more red fabric or yellow fabric, whatever the color, and right. put it in there. Yeah. In the, in the case of the fractal balloon, since it is all this pattern, you would have to go back to the factory and have them print a new panel for you and replace the panel, because you can't just put a piece of orange fabric in there. So if it's Gore 5 panel 4, they have to go back and figure out in the design what that panel exactly. was. Exactly. And reprint the exact panel. And then replace you know, that. I, I never thought about that. But we had neither when Jonathan yeah, talked about that. Yeah, because if you've got a, 
you know, if you're, uh, well, let's say the Xfinity rewards balloon there, if you burn one of those first panels there, a blue one, a purple one, and a yellow one, whatever, you just go have another panel of blue, purple, or yellow fabric put in. It's not a big yeah, deal. Yeah, off um, the shelf uh, exactly. balloon fabric. Yeah, but in the case of uh, the fractal balloon, then yes, that I could see where that could be a little bit challenging. So that's where having all of that pattern designed on the computer, printed out that way, easy to go back then, fairly easy to go back I'm to I'm sure say, it's graphed so that they know which yeah, panel, exactly. what, what part of the design is on which individual panel yep. of the balloon. Yep, but it also makes repairs more expensive. I was going to say, still, it makes for an expensive repair, you're right. There goes the General Mills balloon, the ba uh, balloon carrying the General Mills banner, at least, over on the far side of the field which uh, again harkens the memory back to the years when we used to fly out of the field south of us here. And uh, General Mills was at uh, the, what then would have been the southwest corner of that field. And many times was the morning we'd be on the uh, scaffolding announcing the flight. And it was like being inside a bowl of Cocoa Puffs. Keith Takach flies the balloon to catch of another breeze, or to catch a breeze. To catch no, that, a breeze. See, this one is to catch another breeze. He has a racer-shaped balloon as well. Okay. He's uh, a local pilot, and he is actually doing very well in the local competitions here, the local hot air balloon club and the local hot air competition club. I think he's leading, or at least at the top of uh, both of those, uh, near the top of both of those so in our little fun competitions. All right, so Quad A is the local balloon club, club. which is the um, Aeronaut Albuquerque Aerostat Albuquerque Aerostatic Ascension. Ascension Association. You know, right. that club was actually started by Sid Cutter back before he was, before we started the Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta. Ah. So the idea, once Sid got that first balloon in 1971 for that June birthday party, Shortly after that, he got some folks to literally buy in, and they bought a club balloon and formed the club. Okay. Quad A, the Albuquerque Aeros Stat Ascension Association. And you bought into the club, and that gave you the rights to be able to fly the balloon, take lessons, and those types of things. Yeah. And then over the years, it's expanded um, to where you can join the club as a social member, as a pilot, or any of those types of things. We no longer own a club balloon. We don't do that anymore. Everybody brings their own balloons to the table. Um, but we sponsor, organ we have monthly meetings, we have monthly competitions, not only for balloon pilots, but also for crew members as well. We produce a monthly magazine. And uh, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, our education committee, which is part of the group, is now producing online ground schools. For years, we have done in-person ones, and COVID forced us to move online. So we uh, reacted fairly quickly, I believe, and managed to get those courses online. Well, it, and, and clubs like that were how a lot of uh, people got started in ballooning, where yeah. a number of people would group together and they would buy a single balloon and share ownership. With the legal system we have in this country, with lawsuits, et cetera, et cetera, that's not very popular anymore. But in the UK, for example, they have what they call syndicates. And it's nothing more than a partnership in a way to buy a balloon. For example, if you wanted to be a balloonist and I wanted to be a balloonist yeah. and our PA, Greg, wanted to be a balloonist, the three of us knew each other, we might go together and buy a balloon and we would each be trained in that balloon and we would each have partial ownership of the balloon and, uh, and, and have you know, share flying rights and that sort of thing. That's very common over yes. in the UK, but they don't have the legal tort system that we have here, which is one way of simply saying they're not as lawsuit happy as we are in this country. Um, and so that style, uh, Guy Gauthier used to make a living forming balloon clubs. He would find eight oh, or yeah. nine people who wanted that. to buy a balloon and he would create a balloon club and they would all get together and buy a balloon. And eventually what typically would happen is two or three or four people would learn to fly and become pilots and then they would each want their own balloon. And so someone would eventually buy out the club balloon and then the other individuals would go buy their balloons. But it was a unique way of really growing the sport, bringing people into the sport. But you just, you really don't see that happen that much here in the States anymore. And I blame it uh, in large part on the legal system that we have and the fact that, you know, you can file a lawsuit at the drop of a hat uh, <laughs> for any reason. You know, oh, gee, I, the weather was bad at Balloon Fiesta, so I'm going to file a lawsuit and, you know, 
I bought a $5 ticket and I couldn't get in, so now I'm going to sue them for $50,000. I mean, we're just, we're nuts in this country about that. Don't get me ranting about that. Anyway, that form of, to get back on track, uh, that form of forming balloon clubs, that, that means of forming balloon clubs, buying club balloons, owning them. The Houston Aeronauts Association started that way, where they, uh, Sam Edwards, Bill Murtorf, some of those folks went together and bought a club balloon and that's how they got started. It was At one time, it was very popular here in the United States. You just don't see it very much anymore. If you'd like to know more about the Quad A, the Albuquerque Aerostat Ascension Association, you can check out the website at hotairballooning.org, hotairballooning.org. And if you want to know more about the National uh, Balloon Club for all balloonists, you can check out the uh, website of the Balloon Federation of America, www.bfa. Dot net. The Quad A is what we refer to as a regional club, and there are many of them around the country. In fact, on the BFA website, you will find a listing of all of the regional clubs. So if you're traveling, if you're here from another part of the country, think you might want to get involved with ballooning when you get home, you can uh, check with the BFA website and find out if there is a regional club like the Quad A uh, in the part of the country that you live in. Speaking of Quad A, that's Blair Kaufman, who is the president of Quad Absolutely, A, yeah. taking his new balloon, Heart's Desire Airborne, carrying the banner carrying the of banner. CNM, CNM, yes, local community college. And there's the uh, new hearts on the side of that balloon. Yeah. Tristan McLean, we saw, is setting up the Hot Minute balloon down here at the south end. We got a chance to see the top of that as that balloon inflates. You know, it's the zippy layer doesn't seem to be there I, anymore, I have, and I, it's not down here. No. And, and there is a very oh, tall yeah, box. Look. look up there. That black balloon with the, I always say it looks like somebody spilled a paint. bucket of rainbow paint on the top. Uh, way up high, it is a very tall box. You've got to get up there a ways. But they are boxing their way back over the field. And, of course, Brad Tiemeyer, the expert weatherman that we know that he is, predicted that earlier this morning during briefing, that there would be a box, but it might be very tall today. And, and there it is. definitely the higher you go, the it, slower you go. Which means it's a shame we haven't seen Tall Steve, because Tall Steve would fit perfectly into a tall box. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, not sorry. There, there's the uh, shot looking up and everybody almost getting into a, a parking lot up there. Yeah, a little bit. Well, you were I think you were telling me earlier this morning, checking the weather yeah. uh, readings we had, that there was a layer up there where the you know the speed was like one mile an hour. Or less. Or yeah. less. So Yeah, there was a lot of that up there. Yeah. It was just these lower thousand feet or so that and now yeah, it is mixing down, of course. That happens now that we have some sun and blue sky. The yeah. clouds are... And my goodness, for the first time this week, the, the clouds are white. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. White clouds instead blue of gray skies, clouds. Yeah. Blue skies. White clouds. A great day for more pictures. Right. We got great pictures, but with the gray sky in the background, they just the colors just don't pop no, like they, they do when the sun but, is on them. But they are, they are popping well today. They it's, definitely um, are. Um, I guess Mother Nature got the message that we really would like to have gone out with a big bang, and this isn't the biggest bang, perhaps, but it's pretty big for this week. This looks really good. Actually kind of a nice, peaceful, calming, yeah, easy launch. If I had my, uh, my soundtrack stuff with me, I'd pull up a little bit of Willie Nelson singing Blue Skies. Oh, there you go. Get us shut down. <laughs> well... Because the last time uh, Willie Nelson got on our feed, Facebook shut us down. Well, I know. Well, I didn't mean necessarily for the feed, but just like maybe oh, on the just, PA Oh, yeah, just background. There you, you go. You know, just, it kind of sets the background. Hey, going out of the center of the field, I see Ron Sanchez in his red and white balloon with the yellow pennants and the banner of Bubba's 33, Food for All. Yeah. Ron was uh, kind enough to carry our balloon camera last weekend for us. And... Uh, the sponsor, Bubba's 33, actually kind of sponsored a little welcome back pilots party at their restaurant um, in the few days leading up to Balloon Fiesta. Ah. So good to have uh, Ron in the air and I certainly appreciate his sponsor, Bubba's 33. I didn't get that memo. I, I guess there wasn't a welcome back announcers party anywhere. Mm, you know what? <laughs> if we had gone, they would have welcomed us with I, open arms, you know, I'm sure. You know I'm being sarcastic. I, yes. I'm just taking a dig. 
<laughs> yeah, a little bit of a stick of the knife and twist it just there a bit. There you go. I'm going to get that uh, saw that we got your saw through your head. Yeah, you I, I left that backstage yesterday. I don't know if it's still back there or it's not. It's still there. Is We're going to get there? it. We're, we'll get it out for you. Okay. Yeah. So. That came, and and that, you know the direction came, he's going out of here has changed. It has. They, they were not more, going that direction when no, they went out of here more before. More of a, a westerly, southwesterly component now. Uh, earlier today, it was pretty much pure south. But um, looking out at the north end of the field, there's Tom Caius in the Jabel-sponsored balloon. Yeah. Of the uh, red and blue spirals with the gold and black spirals mixed in there. That balloon was originally owned by my dear friends, Ken and Marianne Layer. It was called, um, I think it was Hot Stuff was the name of it at the time. Um, Ken Lair was the only, is the only pilot I ever trained to fly. He there was my student and, and nothing against Ken, but by teaching Ken to fly, I, uh, I realized I did not want to be an instructor. I was a commercial pilot and had those privileges, but I was just not really um, into teaching. But I still remember the day I was at work at Balloon Life uh, our office out in Sacramento, California, and Ken Lair just walked into the, the building one day and and announced that, you know, I want to become a balloon pilot. How do I, I what do I do? I want to be a balloon pilot. Yeah, and so, um, yep, he uh, he crewed for me with my balloon Yellow Rose at the time, and then... Um, that's kind of a path into a ballooning as well. We talked about getting involved with a club or getting involved with an organization. But the other way is to uh, literally hook up with a balloon pilot and join their balloon yeah, crew. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's how I got started. What is this? Is, is that a drone that's right here in front of us? See that? There you go. See him going up toward the red balloon? And coming, see, right there? Um, it sure looks like it's it. It's a drone of some sort. Now, whether it's it official. It does not belong in this area. It maybe it doesn't belong in this airspace. I, I, don't, I would nope. not imagine that's one that of Burge's drones. No, and it's not one of our. There, we do have a company that is taking some drone pictures for us, but they are not authorized to fly over the field, to my knowledge. Yeah. They have certain areas that they are supposed to stay in. Well, it was just sitting right here in front of us, and, and I was trying to think, is that a bug, or what is that? Yeah, well, when, you, when I first caught it, I thought, well, that's just a bird flying through, and then yeah. just another few feet, and I noticed that it was indeed a drone. But when I saw it go straight up alongside yeah, the, the, it, this red racer here. It was going horizontal uh, by the time I saw it. Yeah, well, it, was, it went straight vertical. Uh, you know, it had just been sitting there, not moving at all, and then it went straight up. Um, so it's worth mentioning that Balloon Fiesta Park is a no drone area. Well, it's a, it's there's a, a TFR. temporary flight restriction, a right. TFR area within four miles, I think it is, of the yes, balloon field. Yes, from the center of the park. If you're not a registered uh, aircraft registered with Balloon Fiesta, you are not legally allowed to be in that four-mile circular airspace. And drones are considered and aircraft. Therefore, drones. you can't be here unless you have specific authorization. So I don't know if that was one that maybe one of our pilots owns and they were operating it here on the field or somebody off-site flew it in here, but... Um, Interesting. Yeah, it, it well, should not have been here, I'm whichever sure it was. I'm sure the uh, FAA and the police and other authorities will, FBI, et cetera, will be investigating that. Yep, and they do have apps that will track you down. Quickly. As Liam Neeson would say, I will find you, I will kill you. You remember when drones started becoming popular, we actually did some tests, detection tests here, and That's found right. that we could respond, we could respond to and track them in about five minutes. Yeah. Um, and that was included the vehicle having to go from wherever it was staged to where you were flying your drone. That's from. right. Yeah. So um, if you're thinking of flying a drone in our airspace, you might want to think yeah, again. Yeah, and you think, oh, they'll never find me. Yeah. Well, guess what? This looks like any the ladybug right in front of us that we're well, seeing. Well, it does, yeah. Which, of course, um, as we found out the other day, is now not called Annie, but she's a lady. Wasn't it the uh, Was it the Isley Brothers who did a great song called "She's a Lady"? I don't remember it being Isley Brothers, but there was a great song. There was way. a great song. I was thinking it was the. Yeah. Who can get there first? <laughs> Who can get to Google quickest? <laughs> it's one of 
my favorite. Tom songs. Jones did one. No, uh, but it's not the Tom Jones version I'm thinking of. Maybe it's not. Maybe she's a lady. Is not the title. Um, all right. Paul Anka on. did one called. No, she's a it's lady. not a Paul Anka tune either. I'm thinking of the one from Tom Jones. No, I'm not. Um, let's see here. Maybe, maybe She's a Lady is just a lyric in the song. In that song? That could be. I'm, I'm doing a little checking here. Hey, I see John Pata going down the west side of the field in his zigzag browns and golds pattern. And some of our Dawn Patrol balloons are also up there. Greg Lindsay in Floating Oasis, and I saw earlier Matt Grote in Jester Unwinds. And here you have a nice close shot as we inflate yet another balloon on the field. I'm not sure who that is. I don't recognize that pilot on our camera. So a quick update from our assistant balloon meister, Peg Bilson, who you met a few minutes ago with Ruth. They are asking pilots, if you are planning to fly, please be in the air by 9 o'clock. We have a number of balloons who would like to put on a static display for you this morning. And uh, we're kind of holding them on the ground until we get all of our flyers in the air. So pilots, if you're planning to fly, our balloon officials, our official, uh, our assistant balloon meister, Peg Bilson, is asking that if you're going to fly, please be in the air by nine so that we can stand up the rest of those balloons that are interested in doing a static display. Here on the final day of the Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta, powered by Exxon Mobil. And I'm being told that I am correct. The Isley Brothers did do a version of a tune called She's a Lady. Yeah, okay. I thought so, because I used to play it as a disc jockey. It was a favorite song of mine. Well, like I said, I'm, re I'm remembering the, the Tom Jones version. Yeah, well, it's not the version I'm thinking of, and I'm not going to attempt to sing it, but it's not Tom Jones or Paul Anka, I can assure you. <laughs> a little different musical tastes, obviously. Um, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. In that, in, well, in that regard, at least. I'm going to do a different Google thing here. There's Mike Bertetto over on the far west side, the different shades of pink and orange with the white pennants. Oh, no. <laughs> uh. <laughs> a double screwdriver ascension yeah. going on out there. And actually, I've been corrected. The Isley Brothers song is actually titled, Who's That Lady? There you go. Yeah. Not, that one I remember. But in the song, there is the lyric, she's a lady, she's a, yeah. she's got a smile. I, I don't remember. I can look it all up. But anyway. He'll be over here. Enough of that. Uh, but, yeah, who's that lady was the Isley Brothers song okay. I was remembering. I knew I was close. Thank you. I, and yeah. I'm not sure who's texting me that. I'm seeing a phone number. I hate it when I get phone number texts, and I don't recognize the name. But thank you for whoever it was that took the time to... Clearly, they're watching and listening to us, and they sent me that. So why don't why am I remembering the name of the balloon we're looking at on the feed as being something like Squeaky? I don't know, because I don't remember seeing that balloon. That's but a that's a new mousy balloon. Let me see if we can uh, call that up. Not that one. Yeah, okay. <laughs> As I search through here, hey, and there's Mr. Winkle, one of our special shapes that we uh, had featured on Friday and Thursday. And she's a lady. 
being walked out of the crowd and now going airborne. It is. It's Squeak, that one I was talking about before. Found it. It is uh, the name of that mouse balloon is called Squeak. Nathan Derringer from Wisconsin. But this is She's a Lady. Being flown for it by us, for us by Tom Forens from Georgetown, Colorado. There was Squeak. So we'll put a few more balloons in the sky, I believe. A number of other balloons are going to continue to perform or stay static on the field, giving you another opportunity to get up close with the pilots, ask them about those balloon cards, get your pictures with them. There goes Squeak right behind the KOA balloon, right from the north center of the field. Good thing we have a camera on that end so we can see its face because from our end, all we see is its tail. And there is another shot of the KOE campground balloons. Rob Nutting flying the KOA balloon for us. From the south end, here goes Cosmic Crisp. Steve Wilkinson. In fact, just eclipsing that shot we have of Squeak. The backside of Mr. Winkle. <laughs> Ruth continues to uh, wander the field and find interesting people to talk to. So Ruth, who have you got this time? Hi, you guys. I have Silas and Mirasia. They're from Edgewood, so not too terribly far away. And Mir yeah, you're Mireya. And Mireya took me to school this morning. Uh -oh. We were looking at squeak inflating, and I said, oh, it looks like a kitty cat. And she said, that's a mouse. And she was right. What's your favorite balloon on the field? I don't know. You don't What are... What? It's a fairy one that I took off. That was my favorite one. A fairy one. Very cool. Do you like the creepy clown over here? No. And how about you, Silas? What's your favorite balloon? The dog and the clown. The dog and the clown. Do you guys up in the tower happen to know what the name of this dog balloon is down here in the northeast corner? Are you no. talking about the white one or the orange one no, with the blue hat? The orange one with the blue hat. That would be Little Dog. Okay, Silas, his name is Little Dog. Yeah, we were trying to find out the names of some of these balloons. So how many days have you been out here this week? Every day or just today? Uh, like almost three days. Three days. Were you here when we had the thunderstorms? Yes. Wow, did you have to go shelter in place? No. Okay, cool. Well, you guys, we really hope you come back again for next year's Fiesta. We'll look forward to seeing you on the field. Thank you very much. Bye. Back up to the stage, guys. Thanks, Ruth. I'm glad that the uh, folks out there can keep us straight on which balloons are which. Yeah, that is definitely a mouse squeak up there and Little Dog, and on our screen as we're looking now, there is the Bravo Bear from Taiwan, Taipei. We, uh, you had an opportunity to talk with them earlier in the week. Just a nice peaceful morning now that the wind has uh, calmed down as we expected and hoped that it would. 
And a little, I guess, I, I don't see a lot of balloons going back to the north. But there is definitely a parking lot up there and looks like maybe a little bit out to the west. But you have to go pretty high to get kind of north. So kind of a nice, easy, almost lazy way to finish out Balloon Fiesta. I see the screwdriver standing up. We saw it standing up earlier with the model screwdriver in front of it. And I see over by the Taipei Bravo Bear, the new Roadrunner Coyote Balloon. We've talked a lot about the history here at Balloon Fiesta and the first club balloon for the Albuquerque Aerostat Ascension Association, the club that Sid started. The one that they flew as the Roadrunner balloon at that first event at Coronado Center on April 8, 1972. They called that balloon Roadrunner because we were gonna do a Roadrunner Coyote event. The Roadrunner balloon takes off and at some point after that, 10, 15 minutes after that balloon takes off, then all the Coyote balloons are released and they attempt to fly to where the Roadrunner lands. So the next year, Sid actually put together a Roadrunner Coyote balloon with the Roadrunner on one side, the Coyote on the other side. Very popular balloon, made it on the cover of the programs in I think 73 and 74. And my friends Barbara Fricky and Peter Cuneo and former State Supreme Court Chief Justice Judy Nakamura teamed up as one of those little clubs we were talking about, and they have created a replica of the Roadrunner Coyote balloon, right down to the large end numbers, the red pennants, and the original artwork of Roadrunner Coyote. So they worked with the Chuck Jones Center for Creativity and the Warner Brothers Looney Tunes folks to get permission to use that artwork, and they debuted that balloon at our Coronado Tribute flight on the day before Balloon Fiesta started. So Barbara and Peter have flown that balloon all week. It's my understanding that Judy Nakamura has stood it up. I can see it out there, but I understand that it is Judy who has actually stood the balloon up this morning. So I'm, I realized as I stepped away for a moment that Who's That Lady by the Eisley Brothers was not the song I was thinking of. That was Ken Drawn who has texted me, thank you, Ken, for that information. But the song I was actually remembering, just to clear all that up, is a song called Wildflower, and it's by Skylark. Oh, the, I, re I remember that one. But the lyrics are, let her cry, for she's a lady. lady. Let her dream, for she's a child. I used to, yeah, let the okay. rain fall down upon her. She's a free and gentle flower growing wild. I like that song. I, I do, too. To, yes, that's I, one yeah, of my that's the favorite, one you were thinking favorite of? songs. That's what I was thinking. I was remembering oh, okay. the line, she's a lady. Um, and, and but but wildflower is the song is the that I was song. that I had in my head, not because who's that lady is is another great song and is by the Isley Brothers, but it's a more up tempo song yeah. than what wildflower is. So just to set the so I was I kept googling and I finally came across it. So but thank you, Ken Drawn, and thanks for telling me that's who you were. I was I had his phone number in my contacts, but I didn't have a name associated with it. And so when I said I didn't know who was texting me, he sent me a text telling me who he was. So thanks, Ken, I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, Wildflower by Skylark, that's the song that I was thinking of. Got it. That's what, that, that's what the term, she's a lady, meant. So in fact, I'm gonna go probably listen okay, to that so, on the drive home this well, morning. Well, there you go, yeah, that'll be in your yeah. room for a while, yeah. You hey, the nice thing about the sun's come out is I was able to climb out of a couple of layers. I put the gloves away, I took the scarf away, and unzipped the jacket. It's nice and uh, comfortable out here now. Yeah, now it's just a nice, relaxing morning. Yeah, oh, look, see? Look there. Both of us, yeah, both of us just kind of laid back yeah. watching things. Well, it's one of those mornings, just kind of laid back and relaxing, and you and I are just hanging out on the roof in the nice weather and talking about balloons. Having a good time. 
So I mentioned the uh, Roadrunner Coyote balloon. As I look out that way, yeah. of course, it's out there as well as Mr. Winkle, and I mentioned the Bravo Bear. But the other balloon I see out there, the red and white and blue balloon with, yeah, the, with the gold yellow, eagles. The gold eagles and the gold bunting. Uh -huh. That is a remake of a very early balloon here from New Mexico as well. That would be Sky Chariot. And okay. uh, Ryan Gunter, who is a yeah. descendant of some of the folks that had that balloon in the early days. He has been working on... Because I think I've seen some old ad, ads for Aerostar, I believe it would have been, or even back then it would have been Raven balloons. Yes, yeah. And that yep. was a full-sized Raven balloon that would yes. have been much larger. And as I recall, it would have had a blue skirt around it instead of a scoop. But, yeah, I recognize the pattern now that you mentioned that. Sky Chariot, one of the, not the original, one of the very early balloons here in the Albuquerque area. Yeah. There it is on the screen. So, again, yeah. Ryan Gunter... Um, bringing that to us. You may remember last year or a couple of years ago, there was kind of a very narrow Fiesta balloon. It was the yellow had the Fiesta in not quite the logo colors uh, not, or uh, font was the was the difference. But that had been here in the past, and Ryan has that one as well. Oh, so okay. He is kind of into. I'm, I'm sure I'd remember it if I if saw, you saw it. it. Yeah. 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 Um, there is a program article from a couple of years ago about all the different Fiesta balloons that we've had. Oh. From that one that Bob Ruppenthal, um, who was a, a board of director member here and right. a um, balloon meister with us. And so they kind of built this. This was their design for a new hot air balloon way back in, uh, I don't know if it was the 70s or the 80s. And it never really took off, but um, Ryan recreated that one a few years ago, and now he's done Sky Chariot. There's a good look at the Lady Jester, the face of the Lady Jester, for a moment on our feed and on the big video wall here at Balloon Fiesta Park. A reminder that uh, to say she's hello back. to, there it is, uh, our friends Carson and Martha Lane back in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Uh, they were the original Fun Bunch, and that was their balloon originally. Uh, many a great Saturday or Sunday morning, usually Saturday morning after flying, when we were at balloon events together and uh, the fun bunch would get out into the parking lot and they'd uh, fire up uh, a big old pot of uh, Louisiana jambalaya or crawfish pie. and That's another song. It is, yeah. That's a whole different song. Let's not go to that one. No, we've probably spent enough time talking music so far this morning. There's a there's a really nice picture but I'm, of I'm, the I'm Fiesta. Gonna, I'm going to call up Wildflower on my on the way on the on drive my back phone, to the hotel. On the drive back to the hotel this morning because that's always been one of my favorite songs. The Fiesta Gold Balloon with our Exxon Mobil balloon as well. Of course, Exxon Mobil, the new presenting sponsor of Balloon Fiesta, Fiesta. and Balloon Fiesta Live. Matter and they fact. kept the powered by phrase as well. That's so right. Balloon Fiesta and Balloon Fiesta Live powered by ExxonMobil. Yesterday was ExxonMobil Day here at Balloon Fiesta. Yep. So Fiesta Gold um, has been static for a while, but they have just pulled the top on the balloon and are deflating uh, the Fiesta Gold balloon. Smokey peeking out from behind now as yep. that balloon from comes down. From our point of view. Yeah, from our vantage point. That's kind of an interesting way to bring uh, Fiesta Gold down. I think that's that's Peg we're hearing on the radio, it reminding is. the pilots the launch is still underway. But if you're going to fly, be up and out of the uh, off the field by 9 a.m. And it just occurred to me it's not 9 o'clock in the morning yet. It's 8:50. My goodness. Mountain time, of course. Well, well yes, you know, of course. We know that still. the folks over in other parts of the country are enjoying tea, getting ready for dinner. Yeah, well, or supper. Which do they call it over there? Well, they actually call it tea. That's it. But what would old, be the meal? Is, is that's there the a meal? Old, that, yeah, that's the old term. What we would call supper or dinner in whichever part tea? of the country you're here. In the UK, that is often referred to as tea. And I only learned that because on one of my many trips over to the UK and Scotland, I was. Uh, listening to a local radio station, and the DJ would say, so call in and tell us what you're having for tea tonight. Oh, okay. And, and, and I thought, I always thought tea was like afternoon tea, like 3 or 4 o'clock. Yeah. They have yeah. high tea or the big cream tea with the sandwiches and all of that. All that stuff, sure. But they actually, it's kind of an older term. I'm not sure that it's universally used anymore. 
But yeah, they refer their evening meal is referred to as tea because people would call and say, oh, well, we're having a, you know, this or that, you know, and, and for our tea tonight, and it was not, clearly it was not like a cup of tea. They were with describing, the little, you with know. the little sandwiches. Yeah, they were having sirloin steaks or, or Caesar salads or whatever. And, and, you know, I'm not sure that those probably aren't the right terms for it. They were, uh, anyway. But it became yeah. obviously that, obvious to me, they were having a meal, not having a, uh, a cup of tea, what they refer to over there as a cuppa. And um, right. so, yeah, so they, they, it is a commonly used term, though per, not, perhaps not universally, um, that the, the evening meal over in the UK is often referred to as your tea. What are you having for your tea tonight? Well, that's, that means what are you having for dinner or supper, depending on, because we call it both here in this country, depending on what part of the country you're in. So here is something that is uh, new to us again here at Bloomfield. We've had them in, uh, it's been a long time, but we have a thermal airship here again oh, this year. I thought we were going to have tea. Uh, no, <laughs> I'm going to send down for a soda here, I think, in a moment. Uh, well, but I'm seeing the thermal airship start to inflate. Works the same way as a hot air balloon as far as the lift goes. So we fill it up with cold air, we heat the air, and there is the lift. However, it has a powered a fan that powers this around so they can steer it and literally maneuver it around the field. So kind of a, a new attraction for us here. We'll so see that airborne shortly, I believe. As we continue to just kind of slowly work our way through the field, some balloons already planning and doing just a static display for us. If the pilots are going to fly, we've asked them to be in the air in the next seven minutes so that we can let more of our balloons do a static display for the nice crowd that we have out here on the final day of the Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta. And I'm watching uh, over the very north end of the field, the Creamland regular shaped balloon. Arabelle was up earlier. They stood her up and now have put her down and the crew has put up the little regular balloon and taken it airborne and it appears to have gotten north of the field so that it can come back south over the field so he's managed to find some level of box up there dale ritchie and there it is right there on your screen although as he comes down there's a little push off to the west still turning into this is a more typical balloon fiesta day. And it's just sad, yeah. that, sad that it's at the last day it's as taken opposed all to week all to week get to get here. to it. Yep. Yeah. Even the, the drainage, the cold drainage wind, you know, before sunup this morning that goes, went away and turned into a nice, beautiful day. And with a little <laughs> bit of cloud cover, it's not going to get very hot very fast. You know, it, it is Sunday morning, and for a lot of us that are football fans, Sunday is obviously NFL football. Um, Megan Billings has commented in our Facebook group here uh, that says, I'm simultaneously watching the Packers-Giants game because they're playing in London this morning. Oh. So they kicked <laughs> off that football game at 7.30 a.m. Uh, I think Mountain Time would have been the time, 7.30. So quite a morning at my house, says Megan. She's simultaneously watching Balloon Fiesta Live and the uh, Packers and Giants game. And for the rare time, I will root for the Packers because as a Cowboy fan, um, I'm rooting for anybody that plays the Giants or the Eagles or the Washington Commanders to beat them. All right. So, uh, yeah, so yeah, football today. In fact, after, once we wrap up here and do our goodbyes and everything today, then I will head back to the hotel and probably get comatose on the bed <laughs> and perhaps, as I told you earlier, I'll be stretched out, maybe watching football. More likely, I'll be snoring heavily. But um, I should wake up in time to catch the Sunday night game. I'm not even sure who that is tonight. but Because uh, I'm a huge NFL football fan. But, yeah. So somebody's, yeah. There was, I, was, I read that because there's this whole stream uh, going on in our in our chat room on Facebook about somebody saying that they wanted to watch this. Was, are we on TV anywhere? They wanted to watch it on TV. Well, we're not on commercial TV. And then people were saying, well, I can stream my iPhone to my television set, so I'm viewing it on a TV set. 
Um, and I did get a comment, by the way, I meant to bring it up to you yesterday at the awards banquet. You know, we are on a, a low powered channel 28 so that like folks in the RV park and right. whatnot can watch us on TV locally. But a lady came up to me and said we had not been on for the last couple of days. Hmm. So apparently there was some kind of a technical glitch or something, I'm not sure what. I know they were looking at the Channel 8 tw uh, transmitter last night. The other place we are on TV is on Comcast Community Access Channel 27. So if you are a subscriber to Comcast in the Albuquerque area or Xfinity here in the area, then you can tune to Channel 27 and see ah, us there. Okay. So, um, beaming something weird in my pockets here, and I, I found I had a ballpoint pen in one of my jacket pockets. I didn't know wow. I had. From one of those autograph sessions, no I'm doubt. I'm sure that's what it was from, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that stack of 8 by 10s that I go down and sign every day when we're finished here. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, for that, I use a Sharpie, not a ballpoint pen. But, yeah. Picking. That way it smears across the picture. Well, yeah, it, it makes sure. Without blowing on it, yeah, making it, it, it dry. It, it makes the autograph look a little sexier is what it does. <laughs> and my autograph is about as sexy as a doctor's prescription. My, although I had an, uh, my old high school speech and debate coach once told me that um, the smarter a person you are, the straighter a line your handwriting is. If, if, and, and my signature is like a big G, and then the rest of it's just almost like a straight line, just a few squiggles. Um, and I'm not trying to claim that I'm smart or anything of that nature. That's just something she told me, and I remembered it for years, that if you look at somebody's signature, if it's, it's mostly just a straight line, then that allegedly is a sign of high intellect. I don't know. But, okay. Uh, although, you know, and, and then you have these guys like in NASCAR where they, they have coaches that teach them how to, they, they literally create an autograph. Yeah. You know, and, and so. I actually I did that when I became a TV personality. Did you? Yeah. And I uh, was going to start doing some different appearances. You know, you know when you do that, you, you go and you MC something or you introduce something or you welcome something or you start talking to groups and people do start asking for your autograph. Yeah, um, sure. So I actually did kind of practice or create an autograph that I still use well, along I, those lines. I kind of did the same thing, maybe not for the same reasons, but somewhere along the line I changed my signature because my signature now is basically just a, a, a G that looks a little bit like the number six, and then I sort of scribble out, and so it's G Moyer, um, because in the old days I used to write Glenn Moyer, uh -huh. and, and it's always crazy because when I, I bought a new car back in March, and when you sign all those documents, you have to sign your full name. And I never write Glenn <laughs> Leslie Moyer. And, and I can't use my typical signature, G, which is a G Moyer. Right. Um, right. And it always confuses me in my signature on any of the documents related to my new car. You would never swear that's my signature if you look at, at anything else that I've signed. It's like a whole different person signed those papers. And I don't understand why that, I guess it's legal reasons or something. But um, yeah, I changed my signature years ago from writing Glenn Moyer to just a G Moyer, and it's all kind of one word and scribbled together, and it, it, well, it works for me. And nowadays, of course, there's the whole idea of a digital signature, so right. you can capture it, and, and, and that way it does actually look the same each time, well, and unless I, you're yeah. using a, a different service and they put their own font in there. Well, and, and now, like, when I go to, to get my hair cut and, and I sign for the bill, um, you know, from my credit card, I sign on my uh, my stylist phone. Yeah, you know, and you, <laughs> yes. you sign with your finger. And, and I'm sorry, I don't finger paint well, and I sure don't write well with my index finger. I, um, I'm with you on that one. You know, but yeah, it, it's all kinds of crazy things. But eventually, yeah, I, I did change my signature years ago, and, and now if I sign something with a pen, it, it actually reads G more. You're not. Glenn Moyer anymore. And I, I so if you have a Glenn Moyer autograph, it's worth more than a oh, G Moyer? Oh, yeah, I'm sure it is. Yeah, yeah. You know, one's worth a penny, the other's worth nothing, probably. And how we got on that That's tangent, double. I don't remember, but I'm not anyway. sure either. Yeah, we sometimes find ourselves going off on these weird conversations. So I'm going to go back and just read some more stuff in the Facebook feed. That's always a lot of fun. Especially when we're kind of just drifting along as we are right now. We are. There's Olaf the Clown on our feed. Yeah. Here on the field, I see the yellow, orange, and black zigzag of Eric Hodges. Also saw a shot of 
Karen Converse's new balloon. Black and pink vertical stripes with pink pennants. Arlene, Arlene Weiss just says, hey, Glenn, I just listened to Skylark's Wild Flower. I'm 61 years old and have heard that song millions of times in my life and never knew the name uh, or artist until now. I just looked up the history of Skylark, too. Thanks. I'm a music buff, and I enjoy that. Well, thank you, Arlene. I'm a bit of a, bu a music buff myself. I play bass guitar, and I currently have like 15 of them. Goodness knows why. Uh, but, but yeah, I'm, I'm also an ex disc You don't jockey. have that many fingers and toes. I don't. <laughs> but uh, certainly not those that can play music. There you go. Um, but, well, you know, again, that tangent, it all started because I played bass guitar as a teenager when I was growing up. Um, and, and I played a, I had, a, I always wanted a Hofner, which is what Paul McCartney played, the violin bass. And I couldn't afford one, so I bought a Japanese copy uh, that was made by a company called Apollo, which I still have. The guitar is well over 50 years old. But now that I'm an adult and I don't have children, I just, it's just me and my two cats, um, I can afford a Hofner, and I now have nine of them, as well as <laughs> six other uh, various uh, vintage and somewhat rare bass guitars that I've begun to collect, apparently, without really realizing I was doing it. In fact, I have, I have one in my hotel room here that I just bought and had them ship it to me here in Albuquerque because I was going to be away and, and no one would be at home to receive it. So, um, But yeah, I, I'm an absolute music lover. My grandfather was a musician, played in bands when he was most of his life, actually, right up until uh, well into his senior years. And, and I love playing music and making music with friends. And so um, I just, I like good music. And that song, Wildflower by Skylark, if you've never heard it, Google it, listen to it. It's, it's really a great song, I think. Not so, that uh, we'll get any royalties for you. No, I, and, it, I, but, and I but they will. I have no connection to Skylark or, or anything else. And, and I'm curious, I'm going to have to go look up the history of the band now too, because for all I know, they're a one hit wonder. You know, they've. I, I, they're not a band that I have been a great follower of, unlike, you know, I'm a huge fan of Chicago and the Doobie Brothers and the Eagles and sure. uh, those kinds of bands, uh, or, or those are some of the ones, but I uh, never did, um, uh, it was never a huge, you know, I've not followed Skylark, so I don't know any of their history. Terry Long, meanwhile, says, Glenn must be tired talking about music and signatures and to, uh, instead of telling us all about the balloons. I know the broad, what else does she say here? I know the broadcasters are ready to get some rest. Thanks for talking us through the amazing 50. Well, yeah, we, you know, to be honest, uh, Terry, we are tired. It's been a long week. And to be honest, we've talked a lot about the balloons, but, but the balloons are no longer flying. They're just standing here static. And we're talking about each different one, usually as they stand up. And it brings some other memory and, and story and about it, it. Yeah, and it sparks another memory. The whole music thing, you know, was sparked when She's a Lady, the Ladybug Balloon launched. And that sparked a memory of this song, the lyric in the song, which led me off onto that music tangent. It's not that we don't want to talk about the balloons or we're not, you know, but each, sometimes a balloon sparks a certain memory that we have and it does send us off on a tangent and I recognize that. But you have to realize too, we're also sitting up here talking for three, four hours virtually non-stop. And there's not always something happening to us that we can talk about. And so, and then in an effort to be entertaining and informative and whatever, sometimes we do that on a tangent. And so if that upsets you, I apologize. You are apologize. But the balloon, she was the balloon, she was a lady that sparked that whole memory that sent me down that session, that whole conversation of music. And clearly some others who are listening tuned into the same train of thought and were commenting in that regard. So. Yeah, there's but, the. But uh, we're talking about the balloons too. Fiesta thermal airship, which Where? we could talk about right, right there. Oh, there yeah. he is. Yeah, all the way at the north end. He's yeah. right in the. We got fact, a great shot on the he's field. He's been on Barbara and uh, uh, Peter's launch site most of the week. He it, has. Mm -hmm. Well, you notice that they've moved I, I the say, uh, Roadrunner I, I, Coyote balloon a whole lot closer today. I don't want to say there was friction there, but there was some. Um, uh, that thing is huge, that Fiesta thermal <laughs> airship. It took up the whole launch site, so they didn't have any place to inflate. So, yeah, I see that they have moved the Roadrunner Coyote balloon uh, much closer to us now, which is nice. Yep. I, and, uh, Did you I, ever send down for a soda, by the way? You know, um, I didn't. 
I need to do that, I guess. Well, if you do, I'd like one as well. All righty. So they have now told the pilots that the field is open for landings. While we were doing launches off the okay. field, we asked that we pilots don't come back and land on the field. But the rest of the balloons that are on the field now are going to stay static and will not be launching. Uh, although I guess somebody could change their mind. But they are now doing a static display because we've passed the 9 o'clock hour. But that means the field is open for balloons to come back and land on the field. Although there's only, what, half a dozen balloons that are, well, maybe more as I look over here well, to, to the left, to but, the west. But, you know, there, there, there is direction up there because yeah. all of a sudden a balloon that was over here is over there and then it's back again. Okay. So there is uh, there is some direction. It's, it's not like a competition day, though, when no, the pilots are flying no. to the field already and after they throw the t at the target, then they land here on the field. But I, I get your point. Yeah, yeah now it's kind of a... Uh, it it is a, a nice, big, open green area, and it's very slow on the surface. It's virtually dead calm now. So it would be easy. You could land on the field, even though it's a somewhat congested area with all the spectators still here. And you it's could easily land on the field with, uh, and do so very safely. And it's always bragging rights. When you can land where you took oh, off. Oh, yeah. 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 That's, uh, Boy, that's when you're a hot shot pilot. That's it. Top of the game when you can make that happen. Yeah, absolutely. So just a, a nice, easy... Kind of lazy way to wrap up Balloon Fiesta number 50. Yep. I'll go off on a slight tangent, tell an old balloon story. When I had my first balloon, Yellow Rose, was flying out in California. You're going to um, tip off our uh, feed guys again and get them off? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, but, yeah, it was. we did a really nice flight from a place, a launch site, favorite launch site we had out there called the Van Vleck Ranch. It was a, a ranch owned by the Van Vleck family, and uh, a lot of us that... Uh, flew out of the Sacramento area, would go out there in the foothills and fly. And so one day we, we were able to fly a box. I landed right back where I had taken off from. And it happened to be, it was the, the one year birthday of my balloon yellow rose. So one of my crew, uh, Marianne Layer, had baked a great cake and we were going to have this big party and everything. And it was really special that I had landed, you know, I'd done the box. I'd been a hot shot pilot and landed right back where I took off from. We're packing up the balloon, and we talked about earlier this week, Art, you recall we were talking about parachutes and the centering lines and how some have pulley systems and yes. whatnot. Yes. So we've streamered the balloon out. I'm down at the basket end undoing the cables. Um, and uh, No, I'm sorry, I was up at the top of the balloon. One of my crew was down at the basket disassembling the cables and whatnot and pulling the, the, the top in, and uh, all of a sudden I hear this, Rip. Uh oh! And the pulley had caught on something, and on, on a piece of fabric, and tore one big panel. Oh, and the, the balloon yeah. was one year old. Yeah. It was its birthday. We had flown a box. I'd landed right back where I took off from, and that was the first time I had ever damaged that balloon. Ne had hey. never burned it. Never tore it. Never punctured it. And on its first birthday, we ripped the panel, uh, in the most really nonchalant way, just packing up and, and recentering the uh, the parachute top and the pulley snagged on the fabric. So I love flying a balloon with a parachute with the pulley on the parachute uh -huh. top, but I do get nervous packing those up because it's very easy to get that pulley caught up in the fabric. Right. Even on inflation, because if you've yes. left it down, you haven't pulled the top back up for whatever and you reason. Pull the top out to tab it in. Yep, you can be yep. pulling it back the other way. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, so yep, you sure can. So there, Terry Long, we're talking about balloons. Are you happy now? <laughs> <laughs> I hope. There's the putty cat <laughs> on our screen, and I mentioned uh, Karen Converse in the pink and black vertical stripes. Penumbra, the name of that balloon. I see Jay Mason has his Realty One balloon, a Realty One of New Mexico balloon, the teal one with the white diamonds and the orange stripes. Also, he was representing one of the original 13 yes. on our uh, tribute flight. Um, a week and a day, two days ago. Larry Stevens says that uh, they're having a Pegasus. You remember Pegasus, yeah. one of the special shapes yeah. here. Says a Pegasus dry out party is planned for the Battle Creek, Michigan arena this coming week. Thanks, Albuquerque. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, you know, you know, Fiesta continues, even if not right here at uh, Balloon Fiesta Park, perhaps. Someone on our... Uh, YouTube feed here is saying, is this the first time we've had a blimp here at Balloon Fiesta? 
Um, technically, it's a thermal airship in the shape of a blimp, but no, it's not the first time. They actually had a uh, kind of an airship as well in the shape of the yellow submarine that used to fly around. Oh, yeah. And, I re we've, and um, we've had others, the similar uh, type of aircraft here in the past as well. Yeah, yeah. the Yellow Submarine was here one year when we were still announcing from that scaffold, you and I uh -huh. referred so much behind it's the been stage. It's a long time. And we had a Beatles tribute band playing on the stage. And that night, I think every official that was an official that could get on that scaffolding was up there. Uh, including a couple of the Russian team that brought the yellow submarine balloon here because that was a home-built balloon, if you remember. And they were all dancing up on that tower. And I've never seen a scaffold rock and roll and shake and jive <laughs> as much as it did that night. That was a fun night here at Balloon Fiesta. We were all dancing to Beatles music and uh, celebrating the yellow submarine with the Russian pilots that were here. Um, Christine uh, Schrader says, I've added that song, Wildflower, we're talking about, to, <laughs> to my music list, a classic that I forgot about. Enjoy your interesting conversations and information. It does enhance the experience and relevant information. Well, thank you. You bet. You know, if you're not happy with our commentary on the feed, you can always turn the volume down and just watch the pictures. Well, that's true. Yeah. Or you yeah. can come out and apply to be the commentators and maybe take our jobs. Who knows? There you go. So, uh, yeah, people are on the uh, YouTube side here saying they don't want this to end. Neither do we, and I think neither do yeah, our pilots, no. and neither do the thousands of spectators that are out here today. It is the way we all like to remember Balloon Fiesta and enjoy Balloon Fiesta. We are again on the last day of the 2022 Balloon Fiesta number 50, and we certainly wish this had been the kind of weather we had all week. But hey, we're starting and ending the fiesta with it, and so we'll all have great memories. That's right. As we move on to number 51 in 2023. That's right. A view from above the theme starts on October, October the 7th. 7th. Yes. And I'm sure that as, as exhausted as all of us are, and, and believe me, we are, um, uh, I'm sure that given the opportunity, I would certainly stay another nine days and do this all over again if we had the opportunity. Um, you know, so there we go. So Balloon Fiesta moves from nine days to, to 18. 18 <laughs> days. There you go. Yeah. Well, let's just take over the entire month of October. Well, let's just do it. Yeah. Yeah, Why sure. Not? That's uh, Neil Jackson's Flying Circus balloon we're seeing on the screen. He was the oh, one okay. that I kept waiting for to come in um, on competition the other day. He was way off to our... E to our west, to our left, and uh, it was, is he going to get here? And he obviously didn't, um, but now that we see him on the screen, we can talk about him. Yes, because that's what we're here to do, is talk about balloons. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, I'll, I promise I'll stop, you know, but we're just having fun. Um, but, yeah, it's... Uh, you know, so put it on your calendar, uh, fifth, number 51, for October 7th. Be, uh, make plans to join us. Know that RV space reservations, if you're looking to bring your RV here, those open up in early January. So, so not very far quick. from now. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and even pilot applications, uh, typically you guys open those, what, in, in about March, I'm thinking. Actually, we're starting to move them up earlier because of the amount of work that we're having to do in verifying documents and those types of things. Right. So um, sometime in February or March is when pilot applications okay. will go live. Right. Navigator or volunteer applications are basically available year-round. Tickets go on sale in April, 60, six months before. So they go on in April. Merchandise for the next year starts coming out in the May time frame. Typically, our calendar is out in um, early July, as is our new poster. That will be out in the July time frame. A lot more merchandise starts showing up in actually as early as May, June, July, et cetera. And um, I, we don't, while we have a theme of you from above, I don't believe we've selected 
a poster design yet, mm. but we heard from Clegg Cawson last weekend. That we're going to continue with the Looney Tunes uh, theme. That they are ready to, to do that as yeah. we move forward with that. That's so, great. So we'll continue a great relationship with those Looney Tune characters, which also are now on the names uh, the names of all of our parking lots, our public right, parking lots right. here at Balloon Fiesta. Well, and I know that even though uh, a lot of the merchandise comes out early, the design work on that starts even earlier uh, because obviously you shared with me the design of our announcer pins um, early in the year, and uh, I was at the uh, BFA's national convention in April up in Topeka, Kansas. Uh, Paul Smith and Sam Parks were both there, and I had a moment to chat with them, and, and I said, well, I guess I'm coming back to announce the 50th because I see the pin, the announcer pins out, and my name's on it. Yeah. <laughs> So no contract, was, but you're on the pin. Yeah, so yep. didn't have a contract yet, but I was on the pin. So that was I took that as a good sign. It's amazing how we find out things sometimes. It is, isn't it? Hey, way look up. At that, look at that zebra hat. Uh, oh, now, yeah. We talked about all week how the zebras uh, enhance what were just black and white referee shirts that Sid Cutter started putting them in in 1973 for the world championship, the first world championship. Uh, and now those costumes, some of them are quite extravagant, and that certainly fits into that uh, that ballpark. There's the thermal airship we were talking about. And I was just going to say, if you look way high to the right there, Art, to our east, there is Whoa. Cameron Wall uh, in uh, Grandma's Legacy, well up into the sky to the east, over toward the Sandias. That's something else I've missed so far You know, this year is the Sandias get their name because every day it just at sunset, there's just a few minutes when they take on this beautiful pink glow, um, like the um, the meat of a watermelon. And of course, sandia—that's the name. That's the what the Native American word for watermelon, from which the mountains draw their name. And and I haven't been able to. We haven't seen that this year, because the skies every afternoon have been cloudy and gray. Yes, we have definitely missed that. That said. New Mexico, as is a lot of the Southwest, still in a very drought con condition. Yeah. So the couple of inches of rain, even though it fell, se seemed like it fell only right, right here only at Balloon, at Balloon Fiesta, Fiesta Park, because we uh, definitely did not get that much rain at my house, which is probably five miles away from here. Okay. So uh, definitely need all the moisture we can get. Just didn't really need it this past week. But yeah, and not all right here at William Fiesta Park. It is what it is, and we worked through it with great support from communities, agencies, etc., to help us get balloons dried out. Some obviously are taking them home and drying them out. I think a few of our shapes that set up today wanted to get a little more dry. Yeah, I think so. And, uh, you know, get it dry enough that you can actually put some heat in it without damaging it. So the ability to kind of stand it up and, and do that was a great way to end this. Here comes the uh, the airship. The, the airship going to come yeah. over and visit us. Going to come say hello. So they have taken a number of different people. I'm not sure how you get a ride in that thermal airship, but they have taken a number of different people. A number of uh, my staff colleagues are there. Maybe we should send Ruth up there. Yeah, how come we didn't get Ruth a ride in the airship? Yeah, we're wondering, Ruth, if you want to go take a ride in the airship. It would be your first time today. Say what? Um, well, we're just we're just wondering about. Um, you know, we were talking about all these other things, and that could be a fun that could be a fun shot and a fun little deal. They they are taking folks for. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I know like we were talking about that they are uh, they're flying different folks around some of my my colleagues on the staff and some other folks have had an opportunity to kind of take just a, a little cruise around the uh, we have a special guest here oh, hi. on the tower Hello. we have been joined by my dear friend from the Republic of Ireland Pauline Baker and they, uh, she and Malcolm White are here flying Hearts of Fire uh, this week 
at Balloon Fiesta. Um, but first of all, welcome back. It's good to have you this side of the pond. Yeah, We've the last missed... time I met you, Glenn, you were over in the Isle of Wight. That's right, that was uh, just, well, that was earlier this summer, as a matter yes. of fact. Yeah, back in May. Funny how we seem to meet each other in all these different corners of the world. Uh, of course, the first time we actually met was here at Balloon Fiesta. Pauline is a world, multiple world record holding pilot um, and operates a balloon ride business in Ireland. And oh gosh, one of the places they launch from is Trim Castle. Um, I was fortunate to be over there in 2019 and I spent the day with Pauline and Malcolm. They toured me all around their flying zone and um, nice. went to a pub and we you know, just had a great time. They gave me a nice little book about uh, Irish castles. So, you know, we've gone through a couple of years of the pandemic where international travel wasn't possible. So what's it like to be back at Fiesta? Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah, we were watching the live stream last year. We were just glued to it. Uh, we obviously weren't able to travel. So um, it was nice to see the live stream, but it's great to be here in person now. So how we haven't got to fly a lot this year, but I did see the uh, balloon hearts of fly uh, flying a couple of times at least. What kind of flying have you been able to do this week? Well, we had some beautiful flights out over the Rio Grande, which were fantastic. That's my favorite place to be flying. Yeah. Uh, we washed the basket a few times in there. So uh, yeah, we did our <laughs> splash and dash. It wasn't a splash and dunk. It was an actual dash. So <laughs> we got back out of the Rio Grande fairly quick. Yeah. So um, the Irish National Championships, you and I had talked about, uh, we had a, a plan in place in 2020 for me to go from Longleat to, over to Ireland and be yeah. at the uh, National Championships. That didn't come together because of the pandemic. Um, I think they held the championships again this year, is that right? That's correct. We had it, it ran last week, so it clashed with Albuquerque for us. We attended the first couple of days and then we had to leg it over here, you know, to be here for the registration. So, uh, yeah, it was very successful. We had about 40 balloons compared to 650. <laughs> There's so, a big difference. And, and another thing that's, that I know you and Malcolm do, you don't ship a balloon over here like some of the pilots do. Generally, you're able to connect with a local and borrow a balloon to fly? That's correct. Um, we're flying Hearts of Fire, and that's um, been given to us by um, Bradley and Jessica Rice, who was very kind of them. They were in Ireland for about a year and a half living there, and uh, we were able to give them the loan of our balloons. So um, the ballooning community, I think, is very small in that regard. You can travel anywhere in the world, and you'll meet friends, and you can borrow their balloons or go fly with them or whatever. It's really great. So what's the favorite moment of flying in Ireland? What, what should one look to do when they're there to take a balloon flight? We fly from the Midlands. Um, around the Boyne Valley where Trim Castle is. Um, so there's lots to see, the Hill of Tara, um, a lot of history in, in Ireland, as you know, a lot of castles. Um, so we have a lovely river running through as well called the River Boyne. Yes. Not as big as the Rio Grande. Uh, we don't get to splash and dash in that one. Um, but we also fly down in the Midlands where we have lakes and we can sometimes play around in those and Trim Castle is, for those who don't know the castle, you might have, you probably have seen it before because it featured heavily in the movie Braveheart. That's correct. Uh, when that was filmed, a lot, excuse me, a lot of what was supposed to be a castle in Scotland was in fact Trim Castle in uh, Ireland. Yeah. And you guys actually are, are allowed to fly off the castle grounds. That must be spectacular. Yeah, we're really lucky. Um, we can take off from the grounds of the castle. But a lot of that filming, believe it or not, is supposed to have happened in Scotland, as you said. They, ca they actually came to Ireland early because it was so cold in Scotland. <laughs> they actually <laughs> came that. over. Um, so we had them there for about six months um, and they recreated the castles in Scotland off the side of Trim Castle. It was incredible to see. And I was an extra in it. I was, I was about to say, oh, do I remember? A very that young extra. <laughs> you were an extra in the movie with, uh, so did you, did you have any close association with Mel Gibson as an extra, or you were just in the crowd scenes? I was in the crowd scene, but the very last scene, uh, I was watching those uh, pieces coming out of his body, you oh, know, the ghosts and gory bits. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, we were up close. He went, he went partying around 
Dublin and places like that. A couple so. of pub crawls, yeah, I can I expect. Think so. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, how long are you guys in Albuquerque? When do you head back home to Ireland? We're well. We were planning on heading down to Gallup in the morning, but uh, that's I think that's now. wet. Yeah. Um, so we'll head off on. We're heading off on Tuesday, and we're going down to see some friends in Florida, and <sighs> then back to Ireland. Where Not the best location away. planning, I might, <laughs> might I add, know. you know. <laughs> the storm is following us around. <laughs> but uh, I, I had kind of the same problem when I was on my trip recently because I, I landed in London the day that uh, Her Majesty passed away. And then I was up in Scotland when they were bringing the Her Majesty from Scotland down to London. And then I came from Scotland back down to London on the day of the... A state funeral so my vacation planning was not the best this year either. no no yeah. but you were there for a really very special occasion as an yeah. as an american it was quite an interesting yeah. time to be yeah. in the uk and particularly in england well thank you for coming up and saying hello it's good to see you and good give my best to malcolm um and uh, yeah look forward to when we can get together again on the other side of the pond okay take care super Thanks a million, Thanks, guys pauline. Thank, thank you pauline you. good to see you so we uh, continue to just float balloons around the sky. We have a number of them continue to stay static here on the ground. And so there's the airship that continues to just kind of float around the perimeter of the field, taking some different folks into the sky. And we just continue to just have a nice lazy wrap up. Yeah, it's actually a very relaxing way to bring it all to a close. It is. A lot of times the final Sunday morning is very, especially when it's a really great flying morning, it's very hectic because there's that, there's the, the rush to get in the air and get the flight and then you land and you come back here to the field and there's the tailgating and everybody trying to say goodbye and then rushing off to the hotel to get everything packed and checked out by noon and on the road home and all of that. Uh, and this doesn't have that feel to it. This has just really been a nice, relaxing uh, morning with you know some balloons flying now we've got balloons static here on the field people just milling about just um, hanging out yeah just hanging out and having a nice day and by golly it's about time you know it's it's a shame that it took us to get to the last day to enjoy this and yet it's kind of appropriate that it's the last day and we can just kind of hang out and have fun with everyone it's a great day for the last day a little conversation over here about wheelchair baskets and uh Someone is answering on there that, you know, a number of people are starting to add doors to their baskets so mm -hmm. that people can walk in. Yep. And so, yes, there is more of that. And someone they said that they weren't real sure that there is a wheelchair basket out there. Well, there are a couple. In fact, there's one here this year. And that was the uh, basket of the uh, Kubicheks. Right. The right. family Kubicek, which, of course, yeah, owns the Kubicek saw, factory. We saw Peter Kubicek flying his father, and his father was in a wheelchair. And strapped in. And strapped in. Uh, and actually, there are baskets built with electric seats where you can take a, a wheelchair-bound passenger out of their wheelchair, put them into what is almost like a, a, a almost like a racing seat, an automobile racing seat that's mounted on an electric motor platform and, and they can be strapped in safely and then they can be raised up so that they have a clear view over the bolster or the sides of the basket and then it can be lowered back down into, into the locked position uh, for landing so that they're very stable um, when it comes time to land the balloon. And uh, I know uh, my friend Pat Harwell, we mentioned earlier um, that uh, Scott McClinton had to leave for a family uh, emergency. The same thing with uh, Pat and Susan Harwell. Susan's mom passed away, sadly, um, on Monday or Tuesday of Fiesta, and so they had to leave early. Uh, but Pat does a, a lot of tether ride business, and he has a basket with doors on both sides. So that way, you know, when you're doing tethers, you, you know, usually you have to pass passengers, you land, passengers have to climb out over the side of the basket, yeah. and then the next load climbs in over the side, and then you go back up. Well, and, and usually one in and then one out. One in, out. one out, so, yeah, yeah, so that you so balance the weight. Exactly. Well, in Pat's case, they could just open the doors, and one group walks out as the other group walks in. So it's a very easy transition uh, between uh, passenger loads for tether rides. So door baskets have become very, very uh, popular. I think all the manufacturers offer them. So that is definitely out there as well. Someone else was saying, I just saw a balloon with a picture of a coyote on it. <laughs> Where have you been? Yeah. So <laughs> that, that is a replica of one of Sid's early balloons, the Roadrunner Coyote balloon. 
And it's actually not a picture. That artwork is actually built into the balloon or inlaid, inlaid in there. Yeah. Sometimes when you put a pattern on a balloon, you make the regular shaped balloon, and then you take your pattern and just applique it on the outside of the balloon. It's like almost like a patch you would sew on a jacket. Right, it's exactly. a piece of fabric you sew on top of a piece of the balloon fabric. So the process of doing this, um, and actually it was Bert and Joni Padelt in Pennsylvania that did that built that part of the balloon. The rest of the balloon was built here in Albuquerque, and then final assembly here. But they did, they took the big white fabric, and then of course they traced out and, and designed the coyote or the road runner. There's the coyote on and, our feet. By and the way. then they started with layers of this. So they put layers on there, but then they went back and cut out the white. And of course there was a black layer in there as well, and then they would cut that out. So as you look up inside that balloon, you see that coyote, that road runner from the inside. In fact, um, Craig Cawson, the uh, guy from Chuck Jones, uh, the grandson of Chuck Jones, he said it was more fun looking up in the balloon and yeah. seeing the coyote and yeah. the run road runner from inside the balloon than it was even from the outside. And what a great looking balloon it is. It is. Yeah, absolutely. It and is. fun to fly because I, I got to fly well, a little bit yeah. of time with that. So there that you was, go. That was, uh, that was nice. So that's, yeah, the, what that, that's what that's all about. And it's actually inlaid, not just a picture of it. Right. And, and the difference in inlaid versus applique, um, I learned very early on my, again, back to my first balloon, Yellow Rose, I mentioned that the, <clears throat> excuse me, the parachute top was a Texas flag. Well, the factory, when they built the balloon, they initially applied the white star. So the parachute top was just a, a field of blue and then the, the single red and white stripe of the Texas flag. And they applied the white star on the field of blue, meaning it was just a big white star patch that they sewed on top of the blue fabric. And when I saw that, I said, no, I'm not going to accept that. I want to be able to see a Texas flag from the outside of the balloon or from the inside of the balloon. So I want the white star to be inlaid into the parachute yep. top so that you can see it both inside and out of the basket. And they, we went back and changed that. And uh, so that's, that's very simply the difference in inlay versus applique. Inlay is, means it's sewn into and it's a part of the fabric, whereas applique is, as I say, like sewing a like patch on a jacket top. or a blanket or whatever. A lot more work to do an inlay, but a lot more work, but the end result is, is much more dramatic. It definitely is. A few minutes ago, I saw a uh, yellow balloon with a black bird inflated on it, and that is uh, a second balloon of Tony Polito. We saw him go out with the Rio Grande balloon, the Rio Grande Down Syndrome balloon mm -hmm. earlier today. So he has obviously landed that balloon, come back to us here on the field, and is now setting up the big black bird. Now that has a lot of history here at Balloon Fiesta. It does. That was one of the first um, commercial balloons in town for Ed Gallus Chevrolet. That was the mascot logo right. of Ed Gallus Chevrolet, and a number of people have owned that. And I've forgotten how many incarnations of that balloon there have been. But uh, good to see Big Black Bird. Used to be called Smiley, if I remember um, correctly. So that is uh, being inflated out there on the north. You see it on the field. It's on the very north end of the field, out there where the uh, thermal airship was taking off and landing. Talking about the uh, Roadrunner Coyote balloon, uh, Sheila Gora, I think it is. Hope I'm reading that correctly. It might be, might be just Gore if I take my sunglasses off. Yeah, G-O-R-E. It says, Looney Tunes Saturday morning cartoons, a fond memory growing up in the 60s, and now I have another fun Looney Tunes memory. A and that's absolutely true. As, as we were uh, talking earlier this week, um, you know, I grew up in the 50s, and Looney Tunes were a regular part of my childhood. Um, I knew all those characters, you know, Bugs and Marvin the Martian and Elmer Fudd and, and uh, certainly the Roadrunner and the Coyote. I mean, those were, uh, those were my Saturday morning babysitters in, in a sense, was watching those cartoons. And they are so, so much a vivid part of my memory. And to be back out here at Fiesta and to find that Fiesta has such a great working relationship with what is now the, uh, I think it's the Chuck Jones Creative Center, I believe. And, uh, and to have Chuck's grandson up here with us. We've uh, talked with him two or three times during the week um, about the relationship between Balloon Fiesta and uh, his grandfather, Chuck Jones, and the whole Looney Tunes gang. And so, yeah, it's, uh, you're absolutely right. It's, it's a part of 
of our, um, those of us of that generation, it's absolutely a part of our childhood. All of those characters. It is. And so we are uh, beginning to wrap down or wind down not only the final day, yeah, but the entire. Why do, why do you wrap up and wind down? I don't know. I don't either. Why do you drive on a parkway and park on a driveway? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All those, that will be an entire another tangent. That's a whole We're other tangent. We're not going to go yeah. on. <laughs> we, we could go on and we could be here till tomorrow doing that, and we're not going to do that. But it, um, it has turned out to be an absolutely gorgeous day here in Albuquerque. It has. Balloons have been standing up and flying now for a couple hours, and uh, they have now told the pilots the field is closed to any launches. Okay. Balloons can continue to remain static on the field. Balloons that are in the air can come back and land on the field, but our official flight operations basically on the field are over for 2022. Oh, no. Yeah. And so I just heard Henry Rosenbaum talk to the pilots that they are signing off their radio. And uh, But, again, the field is open to continue doing static. And um, if you wanted to land back here, you are clear to do that as well. So, so really a nice, just gentle way to yeah. work our way out of the 50th Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta. So last call probably to do some shopping on Main Street. There is still a good crowd over there I can see. Um, the vendors, I'm sure, will probably remain open just as long as, well, as long as Fiesta will let them for sure. And certainly as long as they have merchandise and you're there with money to purchase. Uh, but this would be officially the last call to make a, a stroll down Main Street and pick up that favorite souvenir. Um, if you've not had it, grab that last uh, breakfast burrito if you, you know, want to get uh, one more of those uh, before you go. Any favorites along uh, Main Street in the way of concessions? Now would be the time to go seek those out as well. So as we get ready to uh, wrap up Balloon Fiesta Live, for 2022. Yeah. Any uh, any thoughts? <laughs> any any um, comments that you want to put together about the week? Well, the nine days because someone is over here. By the way, saying, "Oh, it's a shame. It's only a week. It's technically it's technically it's nine days and ten and days. Ten when, days when this you year if you count the aloft. the uh, tribute flight that we did. Um, no, I, I guess my impression of the whole nine days uh, really is just how memorable we all hoped the 50th would be. We've all been counting these last few years. You know, I, I was saying several times, I just want to, as an announcer, I just want to make it to the 50th. Let me do the 50th. Anything that happens after that will be gravy, as it were. But I think we all had such high hopes for how spectacular this 50th event was going to be. Yes. And how memorable it, memorable it would be. And it has been but in some ways for all the wrong reasons. And yet great memories have been made here this year. Great friendships have been renewed and new friendships made. And I never regret being here for the, I'm here for basically two weeks. I come in a few days early and leave a few days after. Um, it, for me, it's such a privilege to have been a part of this for 33 years now and uh, yes, God willing, if I'm able, uh, I certainly look forward to being back. So it's always a privilege to be a, a part of the event and to work with you and our great team at Windfire Productions and all of the staff. Um, it's really humbling to think that I'm able to do that every year. Well, I appreciate those comments. Ruth Lind, who's been uh, out in the field for every one of those days, is now up here on our rooftop studio with us as well. Ruth, what do you think about the last uh, nine, ten days? How, how is this going to be in your memory? It's going to be a very interesting experience. We had our challenges. We worked through them. We worked around them. We did the best we could to make things happen. One of my highlights of the week was getting to be over in the drone field for that flight yesterday. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that, and it was terrific. And then getting to catch up with my little buddy, Payson Cusick. He is, <laughs> oh my gosh, one of my favorite people of all time. But 
All of the people we got to talk to this week have been phenomenal. The officials have done such an amazing job of keeping this all going and not just throwing up their hands in despair. They made it work. Whatever we had going on, they made it work. And I'm so impressed with that and so thankful to be part of this group. Well, we are definitely glad that you are part of it as well. You bring a, an element to the show that really Absolutely. brings it. I mean, we sit up here and talk about what's ha happening here. You bring that piece that most folks don't have the ability to see when they're here. They come when they're here, they're here with their friends, and they talk among themselves, but they don't get the up close and personal stories yeah. that you've brought to us um, this year. Ruth really adds, really personalizes the experience, Aww. I think, for everyone. I mean, we talk about what we can see, but you're right down there with the people and you share their stories. And I think that makes it such a more personal experience, even for those who can't be here and can only watch us on the feed. Well done. I, I know how hard a job that is and you do it just, you make it look effort. You know, I, I don't see it as a hard job. I see it as a fun job. There are so many stories down here. And in, in my own work, in real life, yeah. that's what I do is I go out and I meet with the people and I listen to their stories and bring them in. And I, I, I love the work. I love it so much. It's my favorite part of the job. Well, we hope that you'll be with us for many more years. <laughs> Hopefully we can keep this whole team together I'd, for a long time. I'd love to keep this time. team together. I think yeah. it's a team that works from um, all of our knowledge about ballooning, our love of ballooning, our love of people, and the fact that we all have this experience to be able to bring this. And then of course, all the folks that join us online as well, and yeah. the ability to Great. interact with all of you. Great online community who are really right on top of it all the time with us, and it's fun interacting with them. And of course, we have an enhanced PA system here at the field, so now folks on the field are able to uh, uh, hear us and we've had a lot of folks come down and wave at us and for me one of the highlights is always the ability to get down into the competition area with uh, mm. the camera and to be able to bring that to you and those shots to folks which is something that even if you're on the field you're still a little bit farther away and that's something tom rutherford and i when we were here as field announcers could never do because we were here yep. just talking about what we could see and a lot of times we couldn't see the competition because it does take place a distance away so again, that's an element that Balloon Fiesta Live brings to the Fiesta experience that never was here before. And the other part of this is the fact that it is um, obviously a live show, but all of the shows are archived <laughs> and make them available for folks to be able to see. We only showed the drone show at night. Those people who only tuned in the morning didn't see the drone show, but we recorded it. It's now available for you to be able to go back and watch. We just talked about the wheelchair. You could go back and watch the interview, see the pictures of the Kubitscheks right, that, that Ruth, Ruth brought did. to us yeah. to be able to see exactly how all of that comes together. So hopefully we've been able to bring all this together for you. We do thank you very much for watching, joining us here on the field. We do plan to be back next year. And so watch us and get really wrapped up for that. As we wrap up 2022, I would like you all uh, both to join us in the Balloonist Prayer, which we do at the end of every series of shows. Okay. We're going to do it in the future and wishing folks pre-flight as, uh, yeah. as we go through with that. So here we go. May, May the, the winds, winds welcome, welcome you with softness. softness. May, May the, the sun bless you with its warm hands. hands. May, May you fly so high and so well that God, God joined you in your laughter, laughter and set you gently back down. into the loving arms of Mother Earth. Thank you, Ruth. Thanks, Thank you, Ruth. Glenn. Thank you. We'll see you next year. Bye. Bye-bye. You've been watching Balloon Fiesta Live, powered by ExxonMobil. Want more balloon action? Visit the archive of all the Balloon Fiesta Live broadcasts